here this evening. It's uh, two minutes from last night. We have minutes from last session. I need to edit it out. Mr. Town oh, we have the minutes from last work session. Uh, this is a work session. Do we have the minutes from the last week? No, not yet. Yeah. Do I have next week? Uh, if I can work with my current staff to be able to do that, I'll try. Oh, okay. Mr. Bowie. How are you? All right. Hey. Okay, well, we'll get started here. And I ask Chief if he'll go ahead with his report, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council member. Two significant calls for service this past month. Uh, you can see on July 20th, we responded to the things where the road for an attempted suicide. That individual was ended up being transported to the uh, ER by the uh, rescue squad. So we're on fine now. Uh, on July the 3rd, the vehicle stopped for improper registration. One of the officers gained a uh, consent to search the vehicle, found a uh, crystal meth in the vehicle and also some uh, heroin and uh, cocaine and stuff that was also in the car. So that individual female was charged with three felony charges of drug possession. You can see uh, we've had quite a lengthy uh, investigation into these car break-ins. So if you recall last month, I reported out that a number of cars have been broken into down here to the uh, private property, the boat landing. A week later, we responded out to the uh, Stockdale pool where five cars were broken into. A few days later, we started getting phone calls from the victims um, that their IDs, checks, and stuff had started turning up all over the Commonwealth. Um, we got hooked in with the uh, Powhatan County Sheriff's Office and learned that there is a ring of individuals that have come up out of Florida and have been hitting Powhatan. They made the rounds through Scottsville, Albemarle, Fluvanna County, and we have executed search warrants from Orange, Green, Scottsville, and Albemarle so far. We've, we've served five or six search warrants so far on banks to try to get copies of checks, bank records, uh, pictures, videos of these individuals going through the bank, drive throughs or in the bank to see if we can identify who's doing it. But uh, we're working with the uh, other agencies, pulling all of the information together. Uh, Officer Woods meeting with uh, Detective Richardson from Alabama PD tomorrow. Uh, hopefully be able to get that information uh, to their panel and farm analysts that put us together a uh, link analysis and try to link all of these cases together from these different jurisdictions. We just started getting some of the bank returns today. Yeah, we're just going through all that data, but it's a pretty significant like, color brown case. Yeah. Is there anything, I'm sorry, is there anything we should be doing to maybe if you're not going to let people know uh, you know, don't leave things in your car you know, should we do anything like that? Well, we have been doing that. These these individuals, this is a very significant it's, it's very organized mm -hmm. ring of people. Mm -hmm. We're pretty confident that they're driving into these parking lots and they're sitting and watching people. They put stuff out. The reason why we've been able to conclude that is one of the individuals that had her car broke into uh, intentionally took her pocketbook and belong her valuables out of the driver's compartment pocket in the trunk. Um, but she didn't want the driver's side of it. So they get in, yeah. pop the trunk, and now they've got okay. everything. Uh, they've gotten a number of cars where the doors haven't been locked. Uh, they're leaving valuables in plain sight. They're breaking the windows. But we pretty much believe that they're sitting in the water what's going on and they're targeting individuals as they get out dog carts public spaces. public spaces so so this is a professional group is traveling around the country there's no. a whole bunch of them uh, no no we can at least photographs of a half a dozen people right now right that did not they're they're on the move yeah. <clears throat> it's getting my idea but they go into the private just call us as Yeah. Any other questions? No. No. Uh, community engagements. 
You can see we had our uh, pastor's council meeting on the 20th. Javier and I will be meeting with them again this month. Uh, we partnered with the uh, ACPD, Scottsville Fire Department, Conservation Police, and the Boys and Girls Club, and had a public safety day on August 4th. Great turnout. Uh, we probably had 150 kids, parents, folks there. We played kickball with kids and had refreshments and stuff with them. So it was a great time. They really enjoyed it. Our auxiliary officers uh, had donated uh, 67 hours of their time this past month. A lot of that was IT work by, by Officer Ball. Uh, Department News, you can see that. Uh, just put this back on there. I just wanted council to know that we have gotten all of our body armor that we have ordered and all of the, the paperwork has been submitted to BCGS for reimbursement. So I expect the town to be getting reimbursement for that expense, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Uh, yesterday I sat and did the 599 grant funds have just been released. Um, so we did that. Hopefully we'll get somewhere in the neighborhood of about $16,000 of approved out of that grant. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to talk with the council about, if you don't mind, is the, uh, so last year we had uh, vehicle maintenance on that car that Officer Wood drives and it was $5,600, 61, 56, 61 for vehicle maintenance. And it was completed, I think, sometime in May, right, Javier? I think so, right. And Javier and I had a lot of discussion on when to pay, how to pay, and that kind of stuff. And you know how the town's budget is towards the end of the year. Well, what we found was, is we waited. Um, looks like we had an access of uh, about $8,600 in the police department's budget from out of here. Yeah. And what I would ask council to consider for me is could we have council reappropriate the 5661 from last year's budget from the police department back into the current budget so we can pay that expense so we're not going into the new year in a deficit already on vehicle needs. So I wanted to throw that out there for council's consideration. I know it would certainly help us. Uh, if we could reappropriate it, I'm not sure what the process is for it, but I just wanted to make sure that class you all would consider that. Uh, Chief, thank you. Javier, let me ask you what would that do budget wise as we apply that to this year? So, our this year's budget would look a little bit larger, but we, we played a pretty conservative with the police budget and that's how we had that eight thousand. I thought we were gonna come right at the line and that's why we, we expected we said wait. But that June financial statement came back and that's what you noticed and I noticed that we added a difference of eight thousand. Um that would help with an unexpected um vehicle issue. So that's much larger than we usually expect for vehicle maintenance. Uh, throughout the year, the regular stuff, lights, you know, something quick that needs to get changed, windshield wipe or something like that. So what you're so what you're saying is, if we did the fifty six, move it forward, that's okay in terms of the overall twenty twenty. Yeah. It's I'm always more worried about our cash flow than about the budget in some and then the total number. So the timing is better now when it's slower in the year for us. Um, it would just have to, we would have to formalize it and then I would make sure that that is shared with you uh, and then also with our auditors. Because you remember last year, uh, we, we wanted to make sure our auditors were getting all their figures correctly. That was part of the report back to you guys. Uh, so I just want to reserve, is there anything? Just... We would have to, we'd still reappropriate, so. I have to look again to make sure. So this eighty six eighteen that we were in the black for the for the police department budget, where did that go? Yeah. So back into the reserves. That would 
It's the general fund. Yeah. In the general, it's, okay. un, it's, un, it's unexpended. So, it, it, so it, it goes back at the beginning of the fiscal year, it just shows up the general fund. And then you go back to the police budget. And as the chief says, he, he wants, he needs the 56, whatever it is. And yeah. so you have to reappropriate it. So everybody, yeah. everything's on the up and up. So you would just see it in the general fund as 8,000. We, yes, because we expected 8,000 less in the general fund. Uh, after. And we didn't know that until I did my financial statement at the end of the year. Um, we played it pretty safe, but we did pretty three thousand instead. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, I just know I've got tires I need to purchase for this truck that's out here. If I get that tire, we're going to find the center this ball. Um, and I've been waiting and holding off to try to get it, and I know that spare needs. I don't know. We should be getting our new car in here with third fourth week of this month. And I'm, I know they've got it torn down and they're rebuilding it to fall over the police equipment now. Just got a call while I was away last week from the builder who's doing that. So they're putting it all back together. We get it built back together. They programmed all of the radios. So that's all they need to go in the new car. So worst case scenario, we'll get the car third, fourth week of August. I uh, have to take it to Green County and get it marked up. And then once we get it marked up, Javier and I will talk and or we'll get a hold of the USDA folks and we'll have them come down, do their inspection, finish up their paperwork, and hopefully give us reimbursement for the uh, purchase of the car. So remember that Becky and I reported this to you also. This is going to end up being a catch up year for us. We expected that much earlier, but all grades have taken longer than expected USDA. We even had to drive the state down to get the car at first. And that was a real trip for you guys. Um, so you'll see that in our budget as we work through and we're working through grants. So once you have all that set, I'll take a call. I'll work on getting it back from USDA and we'll meet with them in a that should be interesting. I missed out on it last year, so I'll be more involved this year. Mm -hmm. See you guys. So it sounds like a good thing to do. I think it just makes sense that so it'll come up next week. Next election. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's clear direction for staff. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions for the chief? Thank you. Appreciate your all your hard work and your staff too. Yes, sir. Chamber of Commerce report is kind of short. Uh, two things. Last Thursday, we had a joint uh, meeting with Luvanna and uh, over at Hardware Hills. It's everybody get to know one another. And the main thrust right now is working on the holiday happenings event, which is tentatively scheduled for the first Saturday in December. So we have the uh, all kinds of stuff going on, including the lighting of the Christmas tree and the arrival of Santa Claus. Mr. Mayor, can I interrupt you for one second? This is just a question for Chief. Just occurred to me, I should have asked this. This is just a follow up on the crime that happened. And this is this happens sporadically, as you know, that we get something that comes from somewhere else. I guess my question is, in your efforts to educate the little ones, which is wonderful, it, it, perhaps sometime in the future, there's some type of, I don't know what programs there are, but that would help wake us up to be paying attention also, because there are things that every, I remember some years ago when my wife had to serve on jury duty and she was shocked by the crimes that's around. Sometimes we forget and it's, it's there all the time and maybe just some level of awareness in a way that's even more adult oriented, so to speak, if that makes sense, yeah, because, yeah, yeah it, well, in a way, I, I know you do it, in a, but it's sometimes we forget things like that, that you just tend to think it's local. And there's, there's all kind of stuff that comes through here, as you know, all the time, and we just don't tend to do that. So a little bit of an education to kind of remind people that there are scary things in this world you need to pay attention to, and, and to and to be, a, you know, a community that's watching and helping each other in the midst of of things that happen because sometimes you might not be thinking and you're observing a crime and it's helpful to give you a call and say something doesn't look right over there and and you know to remind our community to be attentive to being communicating with you in unusual situations 
try to push all the information out on our Facebook page as much as I can to keep the community and those that follow the police department informed of what's going on. So, you know, I don't know if the, the news media wants this type of thing. I'm not sure. Well, maybe as maybe it's just us thinking more creative ways, or even when we have the, the website up, there's there might be interesting ways, or we have other media sources in the audience that could do things also that are here that just continuing to make people aware to pay attention and to give you a call if there's a need. Thank you. Newspapers we used to run local crime all the time. Yeah. One page yeah. stuff. Yeah. Of course, there are not any the newspapers, local papers anymore. So that's yeah. all no, gone. That's social media. They don't run every day. Yeah, a lot of people use social media. Yeah, they don't. A lot of people still don't use social media. It, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm not kidding. You. So our little police department's webpage started with 52 followers when I took over. Today it's 900. Wow. So people kind of been putting miracle grow on it, fertilizing mm -hmm. it, and it's yeah. growing. Yeah. Like I think the town has what 1600. I think you're a better social media manager <laughs> than me. I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's about very you know, I mean, I mean, it it has like 15,000 people. Is that the one which France page or whatever it is? That's like 15,000 people. <laughs> okay. People any other questions? Uh, Mr. Bissett, anything from ARB? There is. Um, pretty straightforward meeting. We had two properties that got poor ratings over the last inspection period. Uh, the homeowner has done the questioned uh, issues with the houses and those properties will likely at the next meeting be moved up to fair or great condition. Um, other than that, an issue did come up about the fencing around the Tiger Fuel property and it's not within our sign ordinance. So we talked to ARB and kind of came to the conclusion that it's for ARB to recommend, you know, an SCP, but for council to enforce it and looking at some of the uh, signage laws that we have in place here. I don't know if that's true and it might be on ARB. So if anyone has an opinion on that or if it's something we think is even worth pursuing, it's a temporary fence, but it is against our food. So. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> just like the uh, campaign signs across from the Dollar General on the corner, they're all a violation of the ordinance too. Um, best case, the sign at tag or on the fence will probably, hopefully, since they put a wall up today, will be gone in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was my thinking as well. I just yeah. didn't know my first I mean, first go around with that. So I wanted to bounce it off the council and see what you guys wanted to do. But they don't allow it in the shelves. I, I just, I think we're a historic town. I think they made it take them down. I, I'm more online like that. You know, it's, they got free advertisement and they're huge and they're ugly. And I, I just think that mm -hmm. the fence is fine, maybe a screen, but I think they need to hold the line on that. Like the sign on the fence. I'm yeah, there's, it's there's uh, the company's logo as well as Tiger, the building company as well as Tigers. Um, I can open up a conversation with them through ARB, or I can do it through you know council, or we can kind of all just you know. I'm not. I think it, it right now. I think it would probably be uh, be best if the ARB kind of handled it and then okay. made any recommendations to the council. Another recommendation. Council jumping in on it right now. Yeah. Uh, well, they, I think they have mentioned anywhere between the end of November and the first middle of January. Okay. So, so you can loop your zoning administrator. January is questions. more likely date. Yeah, and I'm you sorry, know, I think I just want to get November was kind of like a wish. Yeah. Right. They told me on Fourth of July that it would be in January. Yeah, it's January. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. They got the same stuff up in Charlottesville, so mm -hmm. <laughs> they're building their new uh, car. Okay. Any it's other AR, AR, ARB stuff? I mean, what about the you mentioned about the blue signs? Or how are we going to handle that? Well, I've asked Cody to pick them up at his convenience okay. and store them here. We're not going to throw them away, of yeah, course. But if anybody not... finds their sign missing, it'll be stored here at the town hall. Great, They're welcome great. to retrieve it. That's, that's much great. more clear in our zoning. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
executed. There's a tree service company in this guy. Yeah, that one needs to go too. Oh, yeah. There's two or three of them. Oh, one street and up from there. Yeah. And, you know, Doug Danzy and I are good friends, but he's got the sheds for sale, about five signs or whatever. And he's got the sheds there, and I think everybody knows this one for a second, but he's got his phone on the ball there. I'd I hate to even approach him about it, yeah. but if you do one, you, you got to do it all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's why I'm approaching this cautiously. It's people doing business in the town. I get it, and I don't want to be a thorn in the side of people trying to make money that will eventually make money off of as well. But we got, you know, the ordinance is the ordinance. So is council that should I pursue through ARB and at least start a conversation? There's two two ways to look at it too. The one with the uh, that you're talking about that I, if I could get out of the car, I would have moved it already. But. Um, <laughs> That's advertising a business, whereas the other are political signs related mm -hmm. to a, just one event, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, political signs are fine, but they're they're focused on one event where the other guy is trying to make a living. Yeah. So and then I, I look at them both ways. I can double check our sign ordinance again, because I know there's distinctions between business done on the premise and then business not related to the premise. So you're power washing unless you're actually power washing on there. Also the ones on the edge of the street are on VDOT right away. And technically, unless you have VDOT's permission to put them out, they're illegal. Meredith, and I think you had something to say as well. Well, this was going back to um, Tiger Fuel, an old issue that I don't think was ever resolved. And I kind of forgot about it until just now. Did we ever get the new signage that they were going to do? I think when Zach left, it was a, kind of in the middle of all of that um because none of their signs that they I've proposed actually, were within i've heard about this recently i remember where might have been an arb i have a great memory <laughs> um i think tiger fuel was essentially like we don't want to change our sign and the end of the conversation was we're going to get a variance well that has to come through arb or uh or council so it's not resolved. But the drawing they presented, the sign, and if you look at the sign at Mill Creek, the drawing they presented, the dimensions were larger than the sign at Mill Creek. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so it'll come back up before, if you want me to add that onto the list of things. When we I'm reach just out curious to, to see, yeah, see where they're at yeah. with that. I wasn't sure if they were hoping we kind of forgot about it in no, the, in the changeover, that, you know. So. They really haven't made that's any, a more serious issue. Too. Yeah, they yeah. haven't made any decision on a sign yet. Yeah. So they need to understand. You're that. better off being ahead of that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe yeah. I then I'll if I can jump on the events right Yes, sir. Right ahead. Um, you just say that about the this political side. I think the Elmar has it you could have a political sign, but it's, I think it's 30 days. Before. Well, our ordinance says 30 days before so the event, and two time. weeks after you let come down. So there is some time. So, so yeah, we want to yeah. encourage that. We're a little bit further out than 30, 30 days. days. Okay. So I'm trying to do this fundraiser again in October. I think it's my mid October. The weather should be a lot nicer for an outdoor event. Right. I want to do it in the Canal Basin Square again. We've already done the renovation on that. So it seems a little yeah. funny to have another fundraiser for it. Is there anything yeah. you guys would like, any projects you want fundraisers for, or any specific yeah. things? Because I think yeah. just raising yeah. money for generally for the town is not going to be looked at like it's going to just not have a good it's, look to it. You so. know, if it's that canal basis square, that, there's a lot of um, issues with that, with that. You know, that whole platform there, mm -hmm. you need to replace those plastic. And there's the sign there that needs to be, you know, yeah. and then the barrels, all the barrels are, you know, I turned them the other day because they were. So you couldn't see the the, the bottom zone were all warped mm -hmm. out of that. So I think we can do it again. Basically, the yeah. barrels, the sign, and the uh, the uh, whatever that stage is they have there. I can't even see it because so the barrels I looked into were like 180 bucks. Yeah, but they're not the same dimension as those ones. So it's a it's a tourist attraction. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, it's beautiful. I would it's love it. those plexiglass. To be clear, the posters yeah. like yeah. a nicer yeah. like. It's really kind yeah. of flimsy, yeah. like a nice poster with a nice frame that's, you know, newer, mm -hmm. like yeah. to be glad. I, 
I think doing another canal basin yeah, fundraiser. Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of projects. Not be out of line because it's a continuing. It's like your house. You got to paint it yeah. once in a while. You got to keep putting something yeah, maintenance. The water fountain never been two years. And, okay, we need to see if we can fix that. You know, it's hot out there, and it'd be nice to have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so those are for me. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on events or ARB? No, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I went to the, Dan was stuck in Philadelphia last week, so I went to the Planning Commission meeting as an observer for him, and uh, it was a really good meeting. The whole thing focused basically on the COP plan. Um, Lincoln gave a really good presentation, and <laughs> this was his presentation. This is your copy. Um, if you haven't got a copy of this, uh, Javier will fix you up with a copy so you can read it. This has uh, got a lot of good facts and figures, and we're heading in the right direction with the completion of the comp plan. So that is what you missed out on last week. Javier, could you forward that to all of us? Yeah, please? I'll share it after the meeting. Yeah, it was a really long meeting. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys know. Is there, is there anything about, because I did the last part, the last one. Is there anything at all in the comp plan about tourist lodging? This is taken off the last five years. and. I don't think it was even broached in the comp plan five years ago. So I think that would be good. So if we're going to be dealing with that. We are dealing with today. The half of the day. Everybody do that? You heard that? They you heard that? They okay, I can see it. Here's one of the survey. Just happened to turn. That's right. I mean, okay. 2023 strategic plan analyzing okay, objectives. <laughs> Short term lodging sector. Okay, so, so when you get your copy of this, you'll uh, it, you it probably may hopefully answer your questions. Okay, good. I know I put it on the agenda. Okay. So that's about all I can report on planning commission. It was a very uh, good meeting. Um, treasurer's report. Um, so this will I will work on our financial statement for. July. Um, that will be our first month in our new fiscal year. So I'll present that next week with some notes and we'll see how we are sitting for um, the beginning of 2023 into 2024. Um, beyond that, I think I have some more relevant um, treasures discussions. We previously talked about, uh, Chief Jenkins, we talked about police department budget. Um, I have a report back on uh, for new topics on the discussion down in the agenda about um, our budget scope for our comprehensive plan. It is moving faster than I expected and moving well and progressing, but I can get into more details. Um, beyond that, I think I've touched upon it a little bit. Uh, this summer is a lot of grant work as I lead into um, trying to also hire and get past our busy period, which is 4th of July. So I can give a staff a financial statement uh, next week that will give us a good update and then we'll continue from there. Um, beyond that, I am chasing down a... Did you get the phone call? No. Um, so I've, I've talked with a uh, previous town administrator and with the mayor before. Um, we have a large delinquent uh, business license. Um, I have been relatively aggressive, but I haven't hit the most serious enforcement that we can do. Um, I've been communicating in them, with them every every other day recently. Um, I don't want to get into the, I would think it's appropriate not to get into the details just yet, but it's enough that it is valuable enough for me for cash flow and just for being fair to all businesses to see what enforcement I can do. Um, I'm waiting on a final call for a check number, which is a little bit frustrating, but I'm running out of options. I've communicated with uh, local and then with uh, higher up the chain also. But, uh, How delinquent? Huh? How delinquent? Uh, it was, they are not licensed to run a business since March. Well, get the, do you have do you have their bank account or their check any checks from? Um, I have some old checks. From. Well, you can seize their bank account. You want to? Don't get their attention. Yeah, I don't get their attention. <laughs> so, part of my question is, how much attention does council want? I can continue this route 
Um, I was waiting on another phone call. I was clear to them that I wanted to report out to town council. Um, this is the biggest fish for us. And I want to be clear that I was told this is one of the important aspects of my work here. Well, then why don't you just write them a letter and say that your patience has run out and that you're going to start enforcement action, yeah. I've including done. court action and, and, yeah. and any, yeah. any, any ability, any, and all remedies available to you as a tax man, which is a bunch. First one has been vocalized. The second one I can vocalize. Well, no, you just put it in writing. Put it in writing. Yeah. I already did, so. Well, no, you send it to him. Yeah. And you send email. it to him? You know? No, I can send it to him. Yeah. I've had email back that I can send yeah, something. Send yeah. All right. And then if they ignore you, just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my Mr. Bowen one Okay. March, we, it's been a long time. March we, too long. We used to have issues some years ago, and it wasn't uncommon where we had to talk through how to do it. Mm -hmm. If we're to this level, it's unfortunate, but it's not uncommon that we have to move in a more direct way and to try to do what you can do to end it, you know, meaning get it so the money comes in. Yes. I like the seizing the bank account with you. Well, you can actually go down there and seize the tills if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> go mess with the tax man. Yeah. No, how, how do you want me to approach it? <laughs> Send a letter first. Okay. They will find a response. Yeah. Yeah. You come, you come <laughs> and I. Uh, oh, well, there's an aspect to we. I'm not going to get you involved. Yeah. I mean, it's well, ridiculous. Uh, what yeah. I think. Hey, Somebody's going to pay attention. Right? Um, <laughs> Peter Chain has <laughs> padlock. That's a possibility. Yeah. No. <laughs> Um, previous two town administrators have been kind of left over. I just want to also tell you that because you will get questions if as we proceed with this. Um, beyond that, I have a, I've been corresponding, we have a hotel study that I've been trying to track down some history on. Um, the product that's coming back, I'm not super happy with. So I'm gonna see if I can have a discussion with him later about it. I'll fill you in, Jim, a little bit about that. Uh, we got a grant through Albemarle County um, and we've paid half of it uh, we have the next reimbursement coming soon, but it's not the caliber of work I would want, even if it wasn't uh, a pass through grant in some respect. So you'll probably hear a little bit about that through email. Uh, what, but what is this for? Yeah. Hospitality study we did down yeah. here. Uh, regional tours board came down, uh, specialist. Um, it was from last year. Uh, I remember yeah. that. We've mentioned it before, right? Uh, but I mean, what's a hospital? I mean, hotels and it's a hotel study essentially. Could we, use and, could we get a hotel down oh, here? We, in market? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we did something like that five or six years ago that looked at boutique hotels and tried to. I, I don't, there must be some you might look back and see that in our documents. We did one for Crozet too, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. Okay. The county did. All right. You can look at that. That's what, what kind of quality that nice. was. I'll look at that. There's enough reading through it with the help of Lincoln that there is some questions about quality on it. Um, we are in a contract, so I'm just giving you a heads up, but I think it'd be a good, I think I'm being a good advocate for the town, um, being a little bit on it. No, questions on quality of the report? Yeah, I don't, it's not great. Um, it's, I want to have a discussion about uh, aspects of it. So, Could you forward us the report? Yeah. And what happens if they don't turn that report around? That's a. I'm trying to figure that out. I'm going through. Uh, yeah, contract call. Yeah. So that's the one thing I'm going to discuss with Jim a little bit about now. And then what happens to the grant from the contract call? Do you have any sense on it? I started digging through it last week because I wasn't. Uh, working on the grant, and I'm trying to find some details on it, but I'm having a little bit of trouble. Well, who so, gave you the grant? Uh, Albemarle. Well, then call them up and ask them. So I'm going to call them up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But for Treasurer's function, uh next week we'll have a financial statement, and we'll try to stay with the same pattern as best as possible. That's too bad. I'm not too good. Any other questions for Treasurer? Which 
the the so hotel where stay. Would fall the staff time. Staff time, definitely. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, we we have about, from what I can tell, it's about a thousand we pay for the majority's grant through that. But I still think you should. We would pay a thousand. Yeah. And that was something that we talked about last year. Yes. And Jim, that uh, hotel study for they did was some time back, was about 13 years. And that's it's about 10 years ago. You're mm -hmm. right. You probably have a better memory than I do, Eddie. About yeah. when, how long ago. I know it was, it's got some time to it, but it's still the same concept. Mm -hmm. Folks, Jose was scratching around for the hotel instead of they launched the study. It would at least yeah. give you some kind of benchmark. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That was the, the situation where uh, Admiral Cannon decided they would make it short as the zone. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, just to get this one fish in the barrel. That's right. And uh, after that, they had to come through the zone sentence. <laughs> so and by the way, neither the way. They didn't they did not get the boutique hotel either. No. Okay, any other questions? Mayor's report is simple. I have uh, been spending a number of hours up here uh trying to help Javier as much as I could with uh, questions he might have ha might have about past things that the council has done and past things that have gone on and it's just been sort of a try to try to help him get uh get going as best he can so that's all uh, my my report mr bowling you have something for us uh, just a, just a few things i learned more about park models than i ever did before I used to know and i think i think i, I told you in an email i think eddie's definition will work if that's what council wants to do and Essentially, if that's what you use, you just have to uh, uh, put the burden on the applicant to, to show uh, Javier, Javier that uh, uh, the, whatever he's putting there meets the ANSI 1999, 199.5 code requirements. And, you know, that's a manufacturer's. Yeah. It's just like it's a good wrench. Right, you know, but it's still it's it's they have a they do they do charge you seventy eight bucks for the for the oh, for yeah. specs. Yeah, it's thirty five. Yeah, so I'm sure it's about this thick and yeah. this that and the other. But, that, you know, but at least it's a standard, and you can't distinguish them from uh, uh, your your run of the mill yeah. RV, whatever that yeah. is. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like that little tag that hangs off the pillow of your mat. That's you it. Know. That's you it. Can't remove it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that's one thing. So that's that, your recommendation to go with that, with what Councillor Payne has. Uh, I think that'll work. I mean, okay. Assuming that that um, you could believe what's on the internet, and half the time you usually can. And uh, but it seems, I mean, basically it's a standard. And Javier was telling me today that. Uh, um, Lavanna County building inspector knew about it. He knew about it and, and he so, gave me some details that I can report later uh, yeah. from discussion yeah. about it. So he's. And we'll talk about that later on. I guess that's okay. part of your work session. So uh, uh, that's the big thing I want to talk about. Okay. And now, Javier, you can put your town administrator hat on. Okay. So we had two council members who attended. Currently today, the first item is we had a EDOT meeting on the 31st of last month. Um, I would say I think it was productive. It was engineers, uh, planners. Um, we had Greg was also there, our police chief, and then two council members in the corner over there. Um, one of the largest takeaways that we discussed was uh, continued collaboration with the town of or with uh, the town of Scottsdale with Albemarle. Um, there was a reasonable breakdown of how uh, VDOT grants and then how maintenance works holistically. So we left with some action items. Uh, one of the most important one was starting with the idea of starting to set up a quarterly meeting between the town and VDOT and kind of building that rapport and see if we can start addressing those issues that I've heard persistently brought up by council or by uh, the public, the Scottsville. Um, beyond that, I uh, gave also an opportunity for Lincoln and I for the comp plan to get a gauge of what uh, supplemental assistance we can get from VDOT and then a little bit more information that we can probably start working into our uh, comprehensive plan down the road. Uh, 
just do either councils or the chief want to add anything for um, the 31st meeting? Yeah, uh, yeah uh, on the new topic, mm -hmm. uh, E, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm, what I'm going to say is, you know, go with what we're talking about now. Okay. Sorry, I don't want to repeat myself, so should I wait or should I just no. go right ahead? Yeah. <clears throat> the, uh, the the folks that came to me thought were really good, uh, a lot of information. Um, they basically told us what the, the, the duties were mm -hmm. it, and told us how they could help Scottsville. However, biggest takeaway probably of the um, is no. Um, we can we can make suggestions and and, and find projects for VDOT, but it's all goes through our small town. I um, mean, they make the decisions, you know, that affect Scottsdale. Now, VDOT does have certain surface treating schedules, paving schedules. Um, I was riding around town today and and. We've got a lot of, of roads that have not been treated for a long, long time, and they're cracking up. And you can see the stress marks from the trucks right outside the door here. So I've been there and I talked, and I reached out to speak about the price and told them we had a good meeting with me now. But the, the road goes through El Volcano Nerve. And then back to Scottsdale. Um, I thought we need uh, her help. Well, it's not going to get done without. Um, sad that she won't be there much longer, but we can get the ball rolling. Um, and my suggestion to her and Javier was for us from tonight until the September work session, reach out to everybody, especially the citizens. Scottsdale, but also those who, you know, come through town. Reach out to everybody. If they see a sign that's dirty, needs to be removed, then over the double. If they see cracks in the road, if they see a pothole, if they see a tree hanging down, whatever they see um, that affects, you know, the infrastructure, get in touch with Javier, you know, send an email. I've reached out to a lot of people, you know, of the food line and say, by the way, you know, how would you ride in here? If you went down Warren Street, it was a rumble. Mm -hmm. But, um, should, be should we be calling the county or? No. No. No, you're going to do a report on it. Both of you. Good night. Here with uh, Ms. Price. Don't call the county. Okay. Um, what she wants from us, and, and I've had on how to go, she wants every trouble to spot within the the confines of Scottsdale, which okay. they have found a pothole where she wants red flags. She wants a map mm -hmm. and a description of the problem. Mm -hmm. Then she will take it to her five okay. and in a big pack. Exactly. Like but an inventory. With yeah, yeah. This is where I think it's just that one big shot yeah. to get something done around here. Well, so. we mm -hmm. out. And yeah. One thing I want to say with staff time, I'm very stretched thin. I was thinking if we could find somebody who could dedicate some time to work with me for that inventory, that would probably be the best way to get it done by the September meeting with that timetable. I could suggest somebody from government services or somebody that comes to mind, or a council member could sit down with me. Or, I can help you too. I don't mind. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, let me. I'll, I'll send you all the uh, things that we've come up with. So let me hey, email you both. I, I, I have GIS. I can do it quickly. Okay. So I'll work with you That's three and sure. put it together. Yeah, hopefully, that should help off. With Captain Jenkins, that already took the ball, you know, three weeks ago, and he just got his yeah. input. So that's, that's very important. It's a good chunk. You don't treat all the time. Well, I mean, this is our, our big shot, and you got to ask for more than we get to what you need. Eddie, are you talking about big improvements, little improvements, medium size improvements, or the kitchen sink? Uh, everything. All the improvements. All the above. Everything. Um, 
everything from repairs to yeah. damage culprits, on and on and on. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Anything you see that, 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 that would affect yeah. the, the highway. Yeah. yeah. And let's yeah. put it together and just do it. Yeah. Since everybody carries a camera in their pocket, take yeah. a picture of it. Good That's idea. Great. Good yeah. idea. So, um, so we're going to document it and send it to Meredith as no. a point person. Yeah, I. Oh, oh, I see. I, I think could, Meredith is well, how, would you help how would you? No, let's go get it mixed up. Let's go with one. One. I'll one. be the point person, and then if I can delegate to, I have already three people who might help me with the staff hours. That feels like a workable thing. Okay, I'll so send, send it to you. Yeah. Okay. And what would say? Is there and a then if, I, 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 I'd like to. Yeah, the summer session. I'd like to have you know the next work session in September. Um, supervise the price. Um, surprise Second I'm Monday. I'm sure she's going to for that. And get her a presentation on the course you can forward all the documentation, photos, et cetera. So I think the most productive use of our time for the meeting is I'll send an email and then we'll work. We'll talk about how to work on it yeah. through email. And we can put it on the agenda. Yeah. And I'm going to get the street sweep of the cut bill by that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have seen hundreds of miles of road. <laughs> hundreds. Oh, but don't forget, we not said that they do rent one each year. And we might be able to you know, hey, leverage man. them to be able to get it down here. Well, Albemarle County rented one that they were thinking about buying. In fact, they bought one. It just hasn't been delivered. That's probably the next few days. But they rented one for two months. They didn't come to Scottsdale. Um, it was dedicated to the urban ring. Um, so I called the police from the county and called the assistant county administrator. And I said, you know, we'd like to try that thing out there in Scottsdale. We've got bigger streets. He said, um, I'm afraid that's dedicated to the urban ring. Um, well, you don't want to hear what I said. <laughs> yeah, but basically, it was citizens of Scottsdale are tired of hearing about your urban ring. Our money is in the green mill creeks. It's coming to Scottsdale, you know. So I'm, you know, that's one of my projects. It's not but they rented one. one. They rented it's one for two months, and it cost twenty three thousand dollars. They got up 100 tons of uh, debris, and I'm no mathematician. I come down to eight dollars and sixty cents a pound to remove the urban range trash. That's not very good. I think. Yeah. But anyway. Okay. Well, so, uh, so I just have one question. Quick question, Chief. At, the, at that meeting, we got seemed interested in solving some of the public safety issues. That were brought up about the the dip in the road and the water, the standing water, and uh, Molly mentioned the cliff there. Did anything follow up? Did they go look at that or? No. But I did write all of that down on that an email, Mr. Payne. And I said it was yeah. So those were the first things that I'm I. I'm surprised if they seemed like. Hmm, she may have looked at it, but she went out to check. But not to say word on it. I forgot that word. Section first Okay, let's talk about the town clerk position. So we have we closed. So I've been working. How do I start? I've been working with uh, Mayor with uh, Eileen and with Thomas Unsworth on a selection committee. We closed our uh, candidate pool last week, and we have worked. Uh, Eileen was gracious enough to set up a process for us. Um, so I have a rubric that we have filled out. We'll discuss this week, and then we're shooting for early August to mid August September. for uh, uh, sorry se September uh, for uh, looking for a hiring pool. So we have a pool of seventeen that we're going to sparse out um, and look at what's qualified candidates. We were discussing today about meeting this week to have our second meeting. So we'll try to do. Uh, phases, and then I've discussed with uh, uh, staff members help I need supplementally around the recruitment process uh, to make sure that we get our best candidate for town clerk. So I would like to see 
just if I can make things more complicated for everybody on the committee. Mm -hmm. I would like to see the last several, you know, choices that you guys have. I'd like to, you know, in person, whenever that kind of council interview happens. Okay. I think that's important to do. The other thing is um space out on this. Mm -hmm. Uh just making sure that council has the final decision on an offer. Okay. So before we make offers, I want there to be at least an approval of the top three, you know. Okay. If that makes sense. What if we provide a short list and yeah. That was my that was my understanding that we were going to go through the same process that we did for town ministry. We're going to get we have the full list. We're going to take that down to long list for fund screenings. That will go down to short list of best mm -hmm. you know candidates. Javier obviously has a big role to play in that, and then comes before mm -hmm. council for final consideration. Is that? Yeah, because for there, whether it's an appointment, yeah. Alex's point is point. And appointment. until then, everything is confidential. But just like last time, Alex, it'll all come forward once the full process has completed. I guess, yeah. Now, what you don't want to do is jeopardize, you know, people have a favorite candidate. But, you know, you want to be able to get through the whole process and then have people weigh in on it once. Yeah, definitely don't want council to have to do 17 interviews. Yeah, I get exactly. that. <laughs> but I want to make sure that, you know, we're all yeah. kind of no, no, up to date true. before an offer is made. Absolutely. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be making the offer. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> you personally, Alex, yeah. you'll be making the offer. And we have the dice <laughs> method to <just> pick one. <laughs> he who complains gets the task. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to move as fast as we can with it. Um, but you want to move at a pace that you do it right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if our timing was a little bit different, I would have tried to, as Jim said, it's your decision. So there might be a special session we wouldn't want to do if we want to be uh, quick to it. I think another important aspect is probably when you find the right candidate, um, to make sure to grab them. Uh, so that might just be a heads up. Uh, that's yeah. what I discussed with our selection committee. Um, for you guys. I just want to make a comment too is, uh, you know, when this was, uh, we had two kind of town councilors on there initially, and then one dropped out, and, and oh, that was a good choice, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it, it should have been, I think, for, for following our strategic plan, it should have been a little bit more communication, we need more transparency. Mm -hmm. I think somebody should have said, like, well, we have an opening, we're going to the house. Is there another town kind of councilor who would like to be on that committee? Maybe Alec could be. Is, we have four other people, and this is a major decision. And and just with her alone, she's hiring a new two, I guess. But I think the town council really needs to be involved with this because this is such a crucial. This is as big as a town initiative. Well, I think Thomas Sunsworth is yeah, I do too. good I, for that only because he did the job. Well, and, I, do you know. I, I agree, but you could have more. You don't have to limit it to that. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think that's a criticism of Thomas. No, no, I'm not going to say it's just like a probably good selection. We're on a stroke. But uh, you know, when you have four other people who were, seemed like they'd be willing to do that and, and are going to be more more impacted by this decision than, than people like that. With the timing, it felt like the best option to move quickly. Um, I think the quicker we can get a town clerk in there yeah. is very important for just us being able to run. Sure this town right um are you looking for a little bit more input earlier on bill well i, I, I don't know if i have but i think i'm sure if somebody else wanted to be but i do think that town council you know should be very invested in this uh primarily you know like this is so we didn't have that for the um yes. We had two town council members. It's me, Lauren Marissi, and Scott's real. Oh, really? He did two rounds, so we okay. switched council. And then yeah. everything came before yeah. council before a final decision was made. We put all the full resumes, but the long list, the short list, and the rationalization for why each candidate was yeah. chosen. And all the counselors got an opportunity to review yeah. that data and say, well, maybe I want to talk to this person. I think council seems to generally agree with the assessment yeah. at the time. We could do something like that, yeah. uh, Alex, a short list that seems like a good small pool that we could try to pull from somebody. Okay. And, I will, and I will stress, it is your appointment. So yeah. it's yeah. just trying to get it over the plate for you guys as quickly as possible. Yeah, bikers. 
hikers. Um, so I think we previously talked, maybe it was the last work session, if anybody has a good memory. Uh, we have the, they call them the Scottsdale hikers, but it's the Horseshoe Bend hikers. Um, they shared with me a draft MOU, but uh, Nancy Gill let me know that she's probably going to try to share something next month. The idea is that it's going to be a uh, large social group that will try to enjoy the local trails, not just in Scottsdale, but in the surrounding area, and then try to add a uh, community service element once a month, uh, uh, supporting Scottsdale with some of the needs we have in and around the parks. So unfortunately, I don't have uh, something right now that's a draft that I think would be appropriate to share, but we could uh, try for next month during work session. So memorandum of under MOU. Yeah. What does it look like? What does it have to do with the town? How are we involved? What is the, you know? Uh, Bill asked the same question. We're it's, gonna yeah. it, would be, it would be you guys. I would have to bring it to you, that memorandum. So you haven't got it before you, so we're talking about so okay. So let me I just yeah. wanted a broad <laughs> I, I wanted a broad okay. understanding because I've never dealt with anything like that before. So. Well, yeah, I was telling Bill, I sent you all an email. I probably Bill sent me an email late four o'clock. Yeah, and I said <laughs> basically you really deal all an MOU is is, is, a, is a written agreement, which is it can be binding on the parties, but usually it's non-binding. But you it's not been called an MOU. Except with the, with the agreement that you have with the county, which is much more formal, but you do it all the time. And one of the interesting things about the town is that you have all these citizens that come forward and say, hey, I want to do this or I want to do that or I want to do the other. And, and, and lots of times the county council says that's a great idea and then we'll help you. And so they, they have a little writing and, and you, you, sometimes you make sure everybody you got some insurance from the group that's sponsoring whatever they're doing. And, and then you go on, go on, on your way. And um, um, and I, I was trying to think of some ideas. I think the Bateau Festival is an example. And uh, I know you've had a bunch of, uh, of uh, community events that are like that. It just appear. Some have lasted longer than others. The uh, Harry Potter uh, thing comes to mind. Then you have more formal agreements with a whole bunch of different uh, and sundry uh, community groups that you've entered into from time to time. Uh, so if some are like really leases and some are uh, much more informal, just based on uh, understanding. Some are one event shows and some are with ongoing duration. So, uh, so it's basically just to set the expectations about what the group agrees to do and what they're not going to do. Okay. Yeah. So that it's very specific and everybody understands. Because unless you put it down in writing, right, everybody has a different expectations about what that group might do or might not do. So this is a way to actually put it in writing, just make it common so that everybody has an understanding and uh, and agree on that going forward. And there's a great model that's in place for many, many years on the Appalachian Trail, the Appalachian Trail Club, for many, many years has been uh, uh, volunteering to maintain uh, the Appalachian Trail, which is H A R D work, and uh, mm -hmm. but they've done a great job, and I'm sure there's they have a, I'm sure they have much more than a memorandum of understanding, but that's basically a, a format which kind of sounds like what this okay. would be. I pulled one off the internet as a base, and then Nancy did a good job of cutting it down and simplifying it. Yeah. And whatnot. The group has a uh, resource page that has reviewed it yet, and so in between now and September. The easy thing is to get the memorandum of understanding that council will like. The hard thing is getting all those people to show up and work mm -hmm. hard year after year to uh, um, to support the, the uh, trail system and the parks and so forth in the town. Yeah, but there are models that yeah. are out there for this type of thing. And I like to see it done. Get to a point where we, we, we I mean, certainly okay. recommended a, a park committee, and maybe they can be part of that parks committee, and we can, you know, to coordinate that with the town because uh, I think that the town needs to be involved with the, the parks. And, and I guess it's just a Van Cleef Park, that might be a great start, but but, yeah. I, but I think it's that would be great to get a parks committee going and, and uh, have me regularly have some some permanence and some accountability, and uh, you know, if that. You know, if they just disband or they only operate a couple times a year, you know, 
we could uh, we still have something going. You know? well, and you know, I I did draft something for Parks Committee, and yeah. you know, I did share it with the team, and I think Nancy had a really good point about let's start small. And go with the group first, and then potentially build up to a more formal committee as we see how many people are engaged yeah. and things like that. So I have that yeah. still sort of yeah. on the back burner, and we'll see, you know, how this progresses. Yeah, it's hard to get people to go out and cut poison ivy on yeah. the weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, when is the yeah. yeah. I'll bring the good yeah. sales. <laughs> poison ivy. Okay. Well, okay. We can see maybe both ways. What's that? What's that? If you would want to look into that further. Yeah. Well, for, I mean, this isn't coming. Maybe well, there's a couple of sources looking at this. isn't coming before us until next week. So we have a little time to digest that. But I would like to see the parks committee. I know you've been on that for a while. Well, I think it's a little bit. I also more. don't want to speak for Nancy and I don't want to speak for her group of people. If they're not interested in something like that, I'm not sure. But Nancy, but well, we need a liaison. Can you say something about the, 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 you want? Sure. Okay. No, she's part of it. Yeah. So basically, the class and I started this group a week ago this past Saturday. We have seventy-four people interested. So what we want to do is go to Van Cleef and actually do an inventory of all the trails and the issues. Good. Right. For instance, I walked the Billy Goat or the Overlook today. Nobody should be on that trip. Mm -hmm. well, I agree. That's why we didn't want the kiosks. <laughs> right. No. So what I'm saying is safety. We're going to go to safety first. Right. And we don't yeah. see how many people actually show up to do work. But Bill, you and I worked on the Ohio Oh, yes. And that was a lot of hard yeah. work. And that's what needs to happen. Here. So I think mean, that would be our first call. I agree. Well, you know, I, I go to the trail once or twice a week, and I know it really well. And, you know, I've actually kind of created a, a building go or, or not thing, cleaned it up a little bit. But I know it's 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 terribly not this for an advanced hiker, you know, because somebody's fallen on it. But, and and that's, we, and Dan was really involved with the, the, the uh, way back with volunteers, and we had these volunteers. Too. We got a nice uh, round, of, round of reservoir pump. Uh, but it needs work too. And did you do that one? And that's one. Yeah, that's that's one. You're gonna have. But, anyway, you have a, but there's there are just to, just to know. I, I there's there's three trees that are down. So somebody knows how to does know how to use a chainsaw for those trees to get them off the trail. Yeah. And you saw some of them today. Yes. Uh, and, and all we want. Yeah. And we we'll just be very basic uh -huh. to again set expectations. Right. They have the rules in place so that we all know the boundaries. Okay. Uh, yeah. But it's great. We do, we do need that. And also just now, because I know it's on the agenda and I'm going to look at it here, there's a whole another game that next month wants to do a work day. All over the country. Yeah, we need to yeah. do yeah. so, yeah. No, we've got it going. Okay. There's a lot so of... So you're going to work with Javier on that? We're going to work with Javier. Good. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, get into the primary issue that we need to talk about tonight, and that's a special use permit. So I want to bring us up to speed there, Mr. Town Administrator. Okay. Um, so maybe we play some catch up from last month. Um, so we all feel like we're in the same spot. So we had a public hearing last month on um, on an SCP for tourist lodging on tax map 36A. 330. So that is uh, 190 Poplar Street. Um, that resides within Fluvanna Cant, within the town of Scottsville, on the Fluvanna County side of the town. Um, the most important thing uh, that came out of that meeting was that we wanted to have another discussion here at the work session about some details that have come up that have been shared during the town's council meeting and also uh, through email. Um, I think we came to a relatively productive uh, email chain, which isn't always true, uh, with Eddie providing a distinction about uh, language around, how do we put it, uh, park model, uh, recreational vehicle. So between, so I spent this weekend and a few weeks ago when I talked with Kevin, uh, looking up some of the details about park model RV standards. Um, we already touched upon it. I think the most important thing is to think of this. Let me take a step back. Um, 
we're thinking about structures. So we have zoning questions, we have fire safety questions, we have water and store questions. So uh, what we what I did was approach it from some angles of questions we had with partners in other organizations, and then some questions we had about zoning. So assuming it as a uh, as a park model RV, um, I can report back that I spoke with, uh, a few weeks ago, I spoke with the Alamo County Service Authority. Those RVs have hookups for water and sewer. Um, remember that lot had a burnt down, uh, uh, was it a burnt down? Uh, oh, I, I, know, I, I thought there was a house up there. There was a house in yeah. town. Okay. So um, help me out. Yeah. The Tachi property? I think it's my. Oh, that's different. That's fine. Anyways, either way, speaking to the engineer, um, the most important thing he assured me is that there's hookups. So they will, there's hookups down by the uh, road. So they could service that property up to three units with water and sewer. Um, they will, there are RVs. So he, gave me his word that he will approach them with the same standards he does a home with the hookups and all the requirements. Um, but it fits a gray zone for the Alamo County Service Authority um, since it's they don't really handle a lot of park models. Um, they're usually thinking of homes or commercial businesses. Um, beyond that, I also reached out to Anna County and they recommended approaching it as something similar to a uh, campground or um, or an RV spot uh, when approaching it. It's not considered a building for them, so they won't so they won't be doing the same way we would have on a new building fire inspections, um, but they will be doing electrical inspections on the property. So uh, going off of the standards, as as Jim said, of the uh, um, of the park model and what was the um, A1195, that would be how we would address some fire code concerns. Um, I got a recommendation from Flavana also that uh, we have some, some reasonable conditions we could provide with, with using our zoning, um, maybe just enough setback in between them. So if, God forbid one catches, you don't have another. Um, beyond that, uh, what I wanted to use, other than feeling more reassured speaking with Flavana's building office and uh, Alamo County Service Authorities and finding, I think, a reasonable definition that won't um, tie our hands as much down the road, considering these model park RVs don't look like, as we've said before, what you think of an RV driving down the road, they look like cabins. Um, I think this might be a productive time. Uh, I have made some notes about any discussion town council wants to have around uh, that special use permit. Um, I could address some of the uh, questions we had from last uh, month and see how productive that is. We could jump into discussion now or I could keep going, uh, whatever you guys feel a little bit comfortable with. It's up to y'all. Well, it sounds like we have a definition. Yeah. Right. So that's there. Do we need, you know, other qualifiers on this? Do we, is the ANSI okay. standard, remember I sent a whole thing of like, what's the difference between a park model and a regular RV? Mm -hmm. Does that need to be in the specification so that it's clear? I would use the park model so then we know that we're getting those require those uh, code requirements for park models. And that gives a little bit reassurance with questions of fire and safety. I think I have some clear guidance with our partner organizations in regards to utilities or services that I'll go into that property. Um, I took your uh, uh, list and thought about it. Uh, concerns with noise and noisiness. Um, we have a or noise ordinance we could always use. Um, I There would be no real health inspections it just it really isn't applicable to this. And then I covered uh, Alamo County Service Authority and then Fluviano's building code and where this fits in within their building code. Um, I think we could discuss uh, zoning standards and consistency about future applications uh, separate from this. Uh, in some respect, holistically, might be productive to, to have that discussion also when we start working 
when we keep working with the comprehensive plan because our comprehensive plan will follow up with the zoning rewrite right. um, so that your zoning is in line with the comprehensive plan. So hopefully this SUP would be a one-off until the zoning standards were revised through the comp plan. I correct? think it's important to remember it's a special use permit. Right. So that your mm -hmm. uh, in definition. Because it would be nice not to have the issue multiple. I mean, it's the first one through the comp, right? Yeah. Uh, from my standpoint, I don't like I don't think it's good practice to keep issuing SUPs for this uh, as one offs. But if it's just sort of a stopgap until we get something in place in the zoning uh, revisions, then I think that's acceptable. I do think we need to make it very clear on the definition that it's not just the ANSI standard, but that there's other qualifiers where they have regular. Um, appliances, right? They're not um, the small toilets that you find in like a little, my little camper that we pull behind our truck and things like that. So that we're very clear on what the part model looks like. I think the part model definitionally covers that. I don't know that the definition covers it fully, other than it does mention the ANSI standard. Um, but as these things evolve, Eddie, I just want to make sure, like now there's less of a distinction between a manufacturing home and a mobile home, right? That line is blurring and now they're, you know, the the, uh, the guidance is we all treat them the same. So we don't know if the look is going to go moving forward. So, um, if I could just present something as a skeleton right? and we can all say no and just, you know, but or we can build off of it and everything out what they want. I would say an amended SUP with new terminology in it. Okay. The approval of one with potential three, which would have to come back to council mm -hmm. um, to do anymore. I think that would be its own fair plan. Okay. I think that's. Yeah. Do you uh, feel that the ARB needs to have any input into this? I think they will. They yeah, come up to the ARB. Yeah, five I think. Yeah. yeah. So I had a discussion with Kevin also clarifying that it, it is within mm -hmm. our ARB. Um, so they will have, uh, it, I would recommend it going through that process. That feels like the most prudent and professional way to go through it. Yeah. Um, Everybody else does. So yeah, sure. It should be no exception. Yeah. Now, was the foundation, is that, is that, that was brought up, is that an issue to have a, a permanent foundation? Yeah, no foundation, foundation only. No foundation. But I mean, you could, uh, you can anchor them somehow, right? You can't be a wheel. But if you want a foundation, you can require a foundation. Oh, you can't. Reasonable yeah. conditions. See, that's the that's the beauty of a special use permit. You okay. can do what you want to as long as it's okay. reasonable, whatever that means. Yeah, I don't in the context. Know. Alex, I won't worry about that. But, yeah. but I do you worry There's about me. the fact that it's up on a hill and and you know there was a tornado or something. They seem to gravitate towards those kind of Things. Well, if there's a tornado and you're in that SUV, yeah. you're in big trouble anyhow. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's, 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 it's a foundation or not, it's not going to yeah. solve the problem. Right. <laughs> to follow up with Councillor Bissett's proposed idea, I I would like to add a little meat on the bone, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Well, my meat on the bone is just a reminder that I've been favorable to the process. We were just trying to find a definition. That's all we were trying to do. We found a definition. We can move forward. Mm -hmm. And it's so it's it's just as long as we all agree with it, it's a chance for us to give a new business opportunity a chance, and it also allows us to have a consistent understanding of what the heck it is, so to speak, because it was a little tricky to figure out what that is. And thank you, Councillor Payne, for finding that, and yeah. mm -hmm. and also our town attorney. Well, I was it was Councillor, it was Mr. Payne, yeah, and then well, Ali yeah. who vouched that. Uh, yeah, it seems, it seems to really be out there and you don't have, well, I mean, you do need to get the set, pay the fork up the 78 bucks when you approve it and get the book so the RVA is not completely blind when he waves it. He can have something to wave around when he says, where is it certified? But uh, yeah, I we know who we're dealing with. We're dealing with Kevin Quirk. We all know him. He's known the community. Um, I don't believe in over-regulating uh, this Park model is a different animal. It's a relatively new industry, but um, there, there are, are communities where there's nothing but these. Right. You see, uh, 
and the new proposed Alamo slash Blue Valley campground, I expect you're going to see a lot of them. That's what we'll be probably mm -hmm. going to be rolling in there. Mm -hmm. um, and and Kevin did show us um, the, the abilities that he wants to purchase. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's changed his mind. And they, they look fairly attractive and they do meet the standards. Um, so I don't see any use in dragging that beating along. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I would say, and you know, when you do an SCP, right, it does travel with the land. That's right. So Kevin a, may not uh, always own that, but then we have to make sure that it, whoever comes after Kevin understands you, what that means. Well, and you, that's you, not, you, I don't you, consider you, that. You've got a five year limitation on this. Yeah, is I, it? Yeah. Is that, we have five years that's what's all to a slot, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I think this will probably become a, uh, a habit of me down the road. I think some language that Becky suggested to me about just um, complying with town, county, state, and federal regulations would work. Um, I had discussions with county regulations and it feels reasonable. Uh, they feel like they're trying to make this work. And it feels, I feel reassured talking to those two uh, um, government entities, I guess would capture them all. So I would suggest that as your zoning administrator to, to allow me a little bit. Um, in general, that would probably be a good standard for this SUP. Um, beyond that, uh, we have those conditions that, um, as Alex mentioned, that. Uh, fall in line with the recommendation for planning commission. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would caution is you mentioned Flubana County mentioning it as a campground or something like that. The state has very specific regulations about campgrounds. So I think I would hesitate they, they to aren't, call that they a aren't, campground. They aren't treating it, they said approach it with the mentality of that. Okay. But don't the it's regular awesome. regulatory as long as they want. their views. I got a little bit more candid than I should about a conversation. With you both. Okay. So, um, ARB looks at it at their September meeting. Mm -hmm. They, um, we, we tie up any loose ends at our September work session and we vote on this thing in September. Can we do that? Are we voting in September or are we voting next session? No, uh, we have to have the ARB's input first. Oh, we have to have a. We can try to set up if you and advertise soon or not. We can try to set up a quorum with Aaron, myself, and some other ARB people to get it moved through faster. If you guys would like to do that, yeah. Well, it's, I, I can't speak for I'm not the chair, so well, I would why speak don't we, to Aaron. But if you guys would like to do that, I can ask her about it. Maybe sometime before next Monday. Yeah, it's so like yeah. There's a, and then you can uh, I'll call on you on on Monday to give a report to the ARB, and then we'll vote. All right. Or they're they already they are required to have a type of hearing at all again. Do we need new hearings for any of those? The ARB has to. Well, I guess we don't no, have the a public official hearing. meeting. We had a public hearing already. Yeah, we already had a public, had a public hearing. Had, but, um, if we make provisions, that changes. Well, no, you referred it to this upcoming council meeting. Yeah. Okay. Well, our, our and I went through that. So, so you continued it to this next yeah. council meeting. What you need to do is that you you need to set a date certain, um, which you pretty much did at your last meeting. But next, you need to just set a date certain when you don't decide on the night of the public hearing. Yeah, I'd like to be more the type of public hearings anymore. Yeah. So I think you're okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you want to meet with me sometime. I guess tomorrow. Yeah. Because we need to do this as well as the sign thing with Aaron. Yeah. So okay. Good to wrap it. Okay. Does that sound agreeable to Mr. Quick? Um I, I think so. But but I mean I, I do want to say something just just to go back to um a, a lot of this. Yeah, there's some of this is my fault. I mean, I, I just have a picture and you know these these types of things, cancer certifications are actually one this. Actual unit when it comes, you will have to use them. Um, you know, I I uh, applaud the fact that you all say, hey, you know, let's hold up. Let's figure out exactly what it is, just to make sure that everybody is clear on the same page. And and I reached out to um, the person with the retail in industry, um, the recreation vehicle industry, you know, 
uh, who's there, and they went through that game. So they said anything to do, you know, it would be in their best interest and in the town's best interest to include that and see that because that is like safety things. It's all the things that I think that ideally, well, excuse me, I want to see. Not that I'm not doing anything different. What I'm saying is that is an excellent thing that you know you all thought up, and I, I commend you, and I appreciate it. But I was never getting ahead of myself. I was just going off of this because I already. Knew and seen it and knew what it was going to be like with you all did. So I follow that on that. Um, if, I guess not, my only question is like the ARB. Um, so are you all kind of doing that before you vote on it? Like, what is it? Again, a recommendation to council okay. by next meeting. Okay. Because if not, we'll have to wait till September when there's an official meeting of ARB. Okay. Well, I mean, that's fine. I'm sorry. So we can vote on this next Monday night. Yeah. Oh, whatever. So, and just just uh, out of curiosity, did you say this was about four hundred square feet? Yes, they're four hundred square feet. I read the real estate listing. A uh, real estate story is in the uh, New York Times, and a four hundred and seventy-five square foot apartment just sold for five hundred and forty thousand yeah. dollars. And the girl that bought it put another hundred thousand dollars into it, getting it just like she wanted. <laughs> That's pretty cheap. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I tell you, it's something up there. Okay, well, that sounds like we got that taken care of, right? Yes. So, Mr. Heisen, the floor is yours. I'm going to go over these. I give everybody these key questions, but I don't know if we're going to solve all this tonight, but I, I do want to come up with a, some understandings of, of taking care of how to make it. Um, the government services, as you know, have been involved with this. And, and town too, to some degree, for over a year about trying to get things done and trying to uh, make the town beautiful, but just maintaining. So the, the first thing is about, you know, how to communicate with town about maintenance concerns. And, you know, I think the public does it through their voices and also through Facebook sometimes from what I understand. So I want to maybe set it up that if there's concerns that it would go, they would, Maybe Javier could keep a list of this. What do you think about that? If there's any concerns about left or whatever, that they would go to you, Javier. Does that sound good? Because you're going to be supervised guy, yeah, right? Yes. Right. So rather yeah. than Cody himself, you know. Could or, we have or, like a? Uh, could we have like a a link or something on this new yeah. new uh, website where it says uh, community concerns yeah. and maintenance yeah. and you can click down and. Uh, Right. It does. There is a, and we'll go through the website later. Yeah. But there is a contact us, mm -hmm. and it said, you know, you can, is this a request for information? Is it a concern or something like yeah. that? You fill know, it in. Spell out. And then it, it, uh, well, that would also be really good optics for the town to do like an email list, yeah. like send a picture of what it is, and then have the town send back a picture of a complete report. You know, it might be a little much of a hassle to right. do, but it would be right. great for people in the area to know it was addressed, you know. Yeah. It got cleaned up, the lights got changed. Right. Yeah, that was the feedback. Mm -hmm. so would be really I mean, the main thing is, is just looking at our town. We have so much public space, and we've only got, we have lots of eyes on there, but not one eye. And I'm sure how you can cover more. Cody can cover everything that needs to be done in, the in, in one week, even. So if people see something, they say, hey, like the other day, hey, there's trash overflowing here. You just, or this needs to be taken care of, and we could just get it to you. So, okay, so that'll, that'll be. Uh, on the website that helps. Um, and then the, then the big thing is to, how to uh, assign those and assure that they're done properly. And that, I guess that the website could be used for that too. If some, somebody brings it up and then they bring it up again or they said it's never been done. And you know, uh, that's that's a lot of supervision uh, and uh, oversight that you're gonna be again in charge of. You know, uh, and that's been a concern over the years. Um, now, Kevin has already gone over what tasks, so maybe you could go over that, but because uh, he's looked at that substantially. But if, uh, I, I don't, going on to the last one, what to do if substitute or additional works are needed? That's a, a concern that it's going to cost some money. So that might be for the town later on. But I don't know. Why don't you weigh in on this a little bit, Kevin? Have you been, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, we did the report card last year. And well, we, and we, we've been working on this for a, a long period of time, and, and one of one of the concerns is is that I, I've always had is you, you want to sort of stay ahead of stuff, 
And one of the things when you talk about San Diego as far as a town, what we're, it, it is a business in a lot of ways. And, and we want to provide something so that when you have to ask for something, it, it, it's, it's a little bit easier. And, and you know, I, I try not to stay on social media, but part of what we learn is some things that nobody comes to the meetings, but you have to talk about food yeah. around you and stuff like that. And, and, and just in, in general, the maintenance has been something that I've struggled with for like the last three or four years. It, you know, I just feel like as, as a town, you know, we want to be as pretty and as beautiful as it can be because that's the first look that everybody has when they come to the area. And it's not necessarily, uh, you know, it's just where they want to live. And they want to live in some place that's a little bit just cleaner. And then when people are coming into town, you know, they, they want it to look a certain way. And we've gone through the part of what do you want to do? And the town council had said we'd like you to come up with sort of an idea. And I, I sort of created a list. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, unfortunately, as we've gone through this, we've had some changes. And, you know, we had uh, uh, Mr. Lawless was here, and then we had, had, had uh, Becky, and now we have Javier. And, you know, it, to me, I've sort of said it's a film back burner for a little bit. And Bill has been, you know, gratefully, you know, pushing a little bit more because I think it's something that, as a town council, what I've always said is I want it to be, I think it's important. I just want to make sure that you all think it's important and somehow we figure out how to get it done. I know Javier is saying I'm drinking from a fire hose right now and having a couple of different jobs. And and I have sort of said, whoa, but I know Bill has been seen on a lot of it. I'm just wondering from my standpoint, you know, there's a lot of tasks that Bill has graciously written down here. We've talked about some of these things in the past. I'm just wondering what we can do to make sure that it, it we can see improvement if that is what the town wants to see. And I'm partial to improvement and, and I'm partial, partial to anticipating some of that stuff. I, what, what we're seeing in social media is stuff that I, I knew was coming. I knew that we were going to start seeing uh, some frustration and, and people are frustrated because of like the, the meal stacks. You know, I, I, I can't stress this enough. When you have a business, and all you get pounded on with, with different costs. And, and I know it gets passed, and you know, we talk about it, I know it gets passed on, but I'm telling you, when you're there in the trenches doing all the stuff, it's hard when it, it, it gets passed on. And, and I mean, I know when it gets passed on, but when those things happen, and, and we we are, you know, I've gone to the tax issue before on the, on the residential side of things. I truly believe that there should be a residential tax that's in place for the people to share the burden. Not that we need to have that burden for everybody, but it's just the standpoint that they are just somebody else that makes everybody better. The town residents would, would be better um, yeah. in that regard. And, I, and I'm just saying, if you're aware, you know, are we at, are we at a spot now where Javier feels like they're capable of trying to start hitting in that direction towards getting some of that done or? Well, let me ask this. You were gonna meet with Cody. Okay, well, I have an assessment that I wanted to share. I didn't get to meet with Cody yet because I, had, I was sick all last week. But I do have some information that I can share with you all sort of how, you know, what I saw and whatnot. If you wanna go through that, is that timely? Javier, do you have that? Do you wanna bring it up? Yeah. When you said that again? I, I just sent it tonight. All right. I mean, I have hard copy. If you want to just sure. well, I think we're all in agreement, though, that if something needs to be done to, to make the town yeah. maintain and pretty, right? So, yeah. Especially some of the old timers that you talk to me. I know that is, and I've worked out long, but you know, over the years, the town is just a beautiful place. And uh, I think everybody wants to, people I've talked to who've been here a while, say, like, what's happened? What's happened? So I think that we got to acknowledge that. So I took, I, I went through the Becky left me a file. I took all of the lists, Kevin, that you had. Matt had some lists for um, Cody. There are a whole bunch of lists about maintenance tax that were in this folder. And what I did is I started to like bucketize them. And you'll see here on these chevrons. Um, there is basically five buckets of activities that we talk about when we're talking about maintenance. 
And so I think it's important that we look at the totality of those buckets and we make sure that we're in agreement on what the priorities are. So there's outdoor place maintenance, so parks and daily management of public spaces and picnic tables and all that kind of stuff. There's grounds maintenance, um, you know, making sure everything's weeded and clipped and whatnot. There's janitorial tasks for um, small office cleaning, painting, um, things like that, maintenance of, of the bathrooms and whatnot. Coordination and communication, uh, constant communication between staff, supervisor, council members. There needs to be a lot more communication there. And there's handy person stuff. So um, helping out with you know the kiosks when they need to get built or other maintenance types of tasks like that. So that's a lot of activity for a single person. Um, and so I think we need to talk about what we're really expecting in terms of maintenance when we talk about maintenance. Are we talking about all of this? Are we talking about one of these, two of these? And then we can look at a model. Um, there are some gaps right now. We don't obviously only have one person to fill all of these. Expectations are not clearly understood or communicated. This is the discussion that Javier and I wanted to have with Cody about what those expectations are once once we get that kind of from this council. Um, I think when you focus on all of them, they all suffer because there's no priority, right? So I think we need to prioritize these and um, get the appropriate level of staffing, whatever that means, and manage within an existing budget envelope. On the next slide, you'll notice what the existing budget envelope looks like. We're spending about $66,000 um, for a current maintenance person. There's the breakdown for you on what that cost is. Um, and then the, um, the next slide talks about options. And I was thinking that maybe government services could start to look at the different options of different models. Do we need to keep the existing model and have a full-time staff? Should we have some kind of hybrid model where we have full-time staff plus some contract labor to offload some of the you know more specific activities uh, seasonal activities potentially or do we want to move to an all contracting model i would like to see some uh, analysis and assessment in there on what the cost breakdowns would be and what that would mean in terms of satisfying priorities in these five buckets and in the meantime if we can get some priorities and how we want to manage them, I have offered before to help um, performance manage um, Cody and have a person to talk with him on what the priorities are and have somebody you know constantly go through this so that we can see how this improves moving forward between now and any future model that we might want to consider. So that's the analysis that I did um, on this. Um, so I don't know if you have any thoughts on priorities. Well, yeah, the GM, uh, priorities is getting the right person for the job. I, I, you know, I don't want to get too much. It's bit. still a lot, Bill, to <laughs> take on all of them. But I can say from, from my standpoint, uh, yeah, what we talked talk about in council before was our, 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 the direction that was told in the future. Yeah, the direction was told was the street here, and then so Valley Street and East Main Street, those were the streets that we did a minimum. So we so so what what I you may not have seen it was just what you can see. So right. when you came down from the funeral home, everything there up to the bridge and over, and and there, there was a plan where it was like you go this way and you, you do all that, and then you come east and east, and then we did the east part. And that was all that I was actually, that was my focus. You know, that and then, then the parks that you that we went through and, and I presented the documentation to where Mr. Carr had indicated that for 175 bucks he would have he would take care of the three things that Cody cuts um, um, there per week. So there were some time savings yeah. that were in there. So so some of that is done, but some of that comes to I guess where I'm going back is 
what that was all that I was looking at, everything right. that you could see, the but, stuff that you couldn't see. But to be fair, when Fourth of July comes up, Cody was very involved. Cool. And I know I was talking to Becky, and Becky was saying, please, he's so instrumental to getting the banners up, getting this done, and getting that done. So we had, you know, he had a direction on what you can see, and then an event happens, and it's drop everything and attend to Fourth of July. And then something else happens, we paint the office, and stuff has to be dropped so that he, and he was very good at what he did, I have to say. So for example. I think we need to be very clear on our priorities, and we need to be consistent, because it's not fair to ask somebody to, um, to work to a, a moving target, if you will. And I think if we can get that expectation and the sets of priorities and manage that better, then we can actually see what progress can be made. I like the idea of the hybrid, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering with the hybrid, if it's part-time is even mm -hmm. so this is logical. The, because re really right now, what we're calling a maintenance person is a groundskeeper, a janitor, a handyman, a, you know what I mean? Like right. he's doing jobs that normally would be broken down between three or four exactly. people. Um, it sounds like he follows directions real well. If you miss right. him, but that, some of the things you would have ever done is this type of work, except for mowing, but... Um, this is an achievable, the town is an achievable amount of work for one person, with the it exception, is, it is, with the exception of the summertime, long mowing, you know, that's a lot and you're going to get distracted from there, so. Including events, you think? I think so, I mean, yeah, or sub out some part-time labor for events, 1099 some teenagers and go move to the table. Which I think that's the point I think is I think hybrid's the way to go. If you take lawn care or even the big stuff, I'm not talking about planters or anything like that. If you take the big mowing away, this is very, very achievable. And I think it comes down to clear action, a clear accountability might be a better word, where there is a, I'm Cody, I have a question. Javier's busy. Is there a council person? Is there a, you know, the clerk when they come, right. but there needs to be a structure there mm -hmm. and expectations. And I think if you want to deal, like you're saying, hybrid, if you want to deal with events in a different way where you're hiring some part-time people for, you know, a day or two, I think that's reasonably in the budget to right. do. Not yeah. that long ago, the town hard out is summer mowing. Mm -hmm. Summer mowing. How long ago was that, Rod? Mm -hmm. Not that long. Mr. Woody used to cut canal base square. I think the other thing too is a solely contracted model is not going to work because right. it is when the right. pipe bursts at night, right? Or you know, you can go through three or four different plumbing. Oh, no, we're busy, we're busy, we're busy. We would love. I want a person that's there and available. And if they can't do everything, we can see what are the big chunks that are taking up your time. And like we said before, with a lot of the stuff, like put it out for bid every summer. Right. As you know, as spring's coming up, who's right. got the best deal? Who can do it? Right. And I think you'll find you save a lot of money, take a lot of stress off whoever's doing the maintenance. And uh, well, and if you look at the, the cost breakdown, if you were to move to a part time and focus the activities on certain certain um, expectations in that Chevron base, you know, there's a lot of money that can be recovered from benefits and other things. Well, well if you my, my, I, what I was thinking about with the hybrid, what I just started to say was that, I mean, if we're, I, I feel like we can, maybe not this year, but for next summer, yeah, yeah. you know, when we're looking at the budget for 175 or maybe even a lower bid or whatever, I don't know that we should go down to a part time. I, I like. I, I feel I like we need a full. I think still need a full time person, person and person. contract the law. I think we look, we look at the different laws. Finding a person that that wants to do part time maintenance right. work without you know benefits and all that stuff. It's yeah. gonna be, and when you find that person, are they reliable? You know, what are they doing on the other time? It's 
a job that locks you down. It's a yeah, job that it keeps you in the area. You got to be available. And I think going to part time would be definitely cost saving. But also, this isn't the. Do we have any general numbers on what's being contracted out as far as plumbing or like minor minor jobs that are? I didn't have that. Okay, because that might be it's doable. It's you, you pull, yeah. We had to go to a plumber. Um, you know, we don't want to get anybody up here, so we have to contract out to get these. You know, uh, mm -hmm. when it's like the balance messes up, you contract that out or something. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm wondering what portion of the total maintenance cost that is. Okay, so what if uh, I like this because it's talking with numbers, and that's easier for me to kind of conceptualize. Mm -hmm. So I could take a year or two, and then pull what I see from my books, contracting, and then yeah. put it into some productive. And I don't, uh, I don't want any of this to be like blamey or you know a, a witch hunt. I just want to have a good breakdown of what is current, yeah. and then you know, I wouldn't mind if you guys want me to do it or if you want to do it together. It's something I'm pretty close to, and I think I'd be a good person to at least sit down and talk to Cody sometime this week. Mm -hmm and get an understanding maybe i can report back to council with that of what what is his perception what is yeah that's what i think it's fair mm -hmm. is to get his viewpoint of and how he feels about this model and what he's being asked to do i will say it's always good whether it's you or me or you and Javier, it doesn't matter it's always good in a performance management context to have two people mm -hmm. at the table yeah. that's best yeah. practice to do it do you want to uh, we have a list for tomorrow. You want to just talk yeah. tomorrow? Yeah, just when in the morning. Okay. So I'm, uh, yeah. I, this also is on you guys too. I, just, I don't want to jump into this. I say that I, you know, I think uh, Cody does fine with uh, cutting grass. Uh, he likes doing that. He, he does pretty good. It's uh, it's it's seeing the other things that need to be done and being able to do them, like the, the trimming and the weeding. He's 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 negligent with that. You know, we got a, you know, somebody told me the other a local a citizen said, you know, we got this Monticello, I mean, this uh, Montessori school, and we got weeds all over there. And, you know, if I was, you know, if I was doing the job, the first thing I would do is like, clear that out. Or if I was them, I'd say, like, this needs, the Main Street is terrible. They got hedges growing yeah. in the street. So he, he needs to be able to see these things and maybe report, say, you know, you want me to do this, you know, take some ownership of it, some self direction. Mm -hmm. Instead of just saying, what do you want me to do today? That's the kind of person we want. I think that might be a good, you know, permanent or semi-permanent position for somebody on council as well as to go every week or every month, you know, touching base, touching yeah. base. This is what you did. You did a good job here. Yeah. This is what we're still lacking on. This is, you know, now it's summertime. We need to start replanting. We need to do all this stuff. And, yeah, you know, that's definitely something to train you as well and get you used to. Because I, I want to get into the habit, but none of this has felt like a habit mm -hmm. recently yeah. because I, well, I okay. really, it's just a lot and we're- Well, we can do that. It's yeah. just that there should be a point person on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that, um, that's great. I'm then you have to everybody do it else. every week. I'm leaving it up to everybody else. else. Oh, I guess I'm going to You're on people. the hook. I, I would say it's still be painful to clarify mm -hmm. what, what you talked about. I said, well, I sat down with Matt Lawless and Cody, and we went through his okay. daily schedule, and I followed him one day for four hours, sort of video taking, taking pictures of what Cody was doing. And in my opinion, just from my experience in the yard care and stuff like that, when, when I was in, in college, that's what I did eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. There are efficiencies that can be done, um, but 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 again, it's just me, and and it's just me. Somebody from a council person that is, you know, I I, I just think it would be better. I I, I will help, and and just if, if things I mean, as efficient as can be done, I think would lead to mm -hmm. tremendous results. Um, and and that's all I'm saying. I don't it really, yes. I think it's possible because that's what we need. That's great. That's but it all has to be documented too. I think that's very case. important. That's yeah. really super important in terms of a process. So whoever does that has to make sure that they have consistent documentation 
every week and that we're going through a process and being fair to the individual and what the um, this some formalization like that will pay off mm -hmm. when one that's, or that's many of us pharma for anybody but when one of many of us are not here for whatever reason mm -hmm. you want to kind of leave those structures around that are useful for down the road absolutely uh, we don't want to keep having to rebuild stuff exactly so i think a mentioning of that condensing of what we have input we've gotten before and putting into something that could be formalized i guess mm -hmm. um and the standard templates for this type of stuff it's not yeah. And Billy also have the inventory on here. Right, yeah. So I think that's important. important. Uh, mm -hmm. That was brought up. I think it's really important. Would you be interested in, a, in you know, we got two or three storage areas for all the equipment that's spread out. It's in its truck that's up the bed, please. We run in the, the farmer's market. And maybe behind this building, I mean, I think it would be good to know exactly what we have. Well, I mean, for sure, talk about because people, people feel things, things and, yeah, uh, and they don't, he doesn't always lock, I've been up there, he doesn't always lock that building up there. And I know we got a couple of lawnmowers and lots of tools, but it'd be good to have a list of it. And, and maybe, I don't know, you should do it, but he's really should really want to have all those places. But, one, one thing, Alex, I'll just say. So you would do that? You would do that? You guys want me to. Yeah. And if yeah. I'm not the person for it, I might not be. If I'm not, I mean, well, I could help you. I think you have the most knowledge yeah. of any of us on council. Yeah, you know that. With it, you know, tools and all that. Okay. I, I'm just going to say that there's, first of all, there's a there's a, the accountability sense that goes to town staff, town council in terms of the maintenance mm -hmm. person. So there's that structure that you all work closely together. The second one is the actual stuff that needs done. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the stuff, as Eileen has noted, as Mr. Quick has noted, it's fairly comprehensive there's a way you might say that you want to wait certain certain projects are much more important the visible things we didn't you didn't mention it but there's also the safety aspects of some aspect mm -hmm. of maintenance and then the other thing has to do with you might say where do we get the most complaints so to speak you know where mm -hmm. is the most consistent so i think the other thing you'd want to make sure is is it's clear i think one of the problems we've had if you go back some years is you might have eight different voices trying to we want to make it simple, you know, so a voice comes in, whether it comes from government services, goes to you, comes in, goes to you or our new town clerk in the future, whatever is simple. And so it's new because this is new. This is a new group. This is a new system. So my hat's off to you on terms of doing it, because usually for something to happen, it takes one of us at this table to kind of step in and do that. So thank you for, mm -hmm. for doing that. And so we expect it finished by next week. Mm -hmm. uh, That's fixed. Again. Expect a bill. One thing too, I've heard some the, the use of the truck too. So you know, you know, I think we need to kind of and monitor that if he's using it for personal use and uh, that kind of thing. But well, I think that's something to consider too. I mean, that's hard work. You know, it's a not huge salary. Is it something we want to be let him be able to do under limitations as using as a, as a commuting vehicle? I don't know. I, I have no idea what everyone thinks about that or liability wise. Well, you know, I think if he's going to be expected to be on call 24 hours a day, it would not exactly. hurt to have the company exactly. car at home with him. I was going to go with something Councilor Moore said before, which basically is at least I've, tell me if I'm saying this correctly. I think in terms of Cody, we should have things as they are. But whatever you want to shift into, and you know, over time, you might say, "Hey, truck, no truck, or this or that," or but you know, we're not taking his keys away tomorrow, so to speak. So we we start with it as it is. We let you have the role that you play. You're getting input from government services. You're talking to Javier. We're implementing a new regimen in terms of what we do. It's not going to be perfect as we do it, but as we figure that out. You're going to come to us again. You're going to come to us again, Bill. We're going to we're going to keep dialoguing about this. And again, I think it's really key that you have those eyes and those opportunities to talk to him together, so that we can, because it's it's no secret it's been an issue for a while. And I think that at least what my expectations would be is over the next couple of months would be me coming to council with kind of a 
first would be a general report of what the situation is. If we get an inventory going, you know, what is our lifespan on some things? Are we going to have any big expenses coming up? Also, to get back from you guys and any other people I want to add in on this, what are the real expectations? What are the priorities? Is it town hall? Is it the fields? Is it the parks? Is it the planters? Yeah. Is it the street? You know, to get feedback from yeah. that I can give to him and that yeah. Javier can give to him as well. That gets... I think that's a movement towards clarity and direction. And then the most important thing is we try to keep that up. As I said, down the road, you know, whoever's sitting in any of these seats, um, I think a level of kind of professionalism will do us some good here. I mm -hmm. think there have been attempts here and there um, to do various things like that. I think another thing that has been, I think is very important. I always think of our, I always think of us through the budget. It happens or it doesn't happen through the budget. So having an inventory and having a realistic view of that and what are your priorities and maybe some figures into what contracting looks like down the road, that will be a more fruitful budget talk in, oh geez, it's already six months from mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, but that's maybe a third order step from what we're talking about here, not even like a second order. Um, but I think Eileen gave us some useful information on that. And uh, uh, Alex brought up a decent, let's just look at what our history of contracting is. Uh, Mike, I have gotten a comment before that summer help would be very useful for the expectations. Uh, that is a word I've gotten before. I would tend to agree between holidays and how fast uh, things grow and then what requirements we have uh, being a B city. Um, but there's different ways to approach this as you gave us three models and then within their models, there are different approaches. Mm -hmm. So maybe something that feels a little bit, I think you gave me a good approach to collaborate together. And I think that'll make it easier to have those discussions about what, what our maintenance department looks like. Uh, we just need a clear process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, I would appreciate some help with that. Um, Absolutely. Can, can I just add one thing that I see coming down the road, mm -hmm. and that is the ready stop mm -hmm. with the fire department. As we go further, the fire department is losing their volunteer base. There is equipment coming down to the rescue squad building that is going to be fire related. This is something that is coming forward, and for so long they provided that help with MCAR reaching out to the folks and then volunteering to do that. I, I just want to make sure we stress, I stress it enough that Scottsville can fill up this bowl if that levy system is not managed properly. And I'm not sure from as, as you go forward or what we go forward, I just want to know that somebody's telling you it's coming. That, well, yeah, we're very that's, close that's to losing. That, that, that's what you're talking about here, though. I, yeah, that's, I, I, I agree. I yeah. agree. But it's like, that's, think, that's, that's, that's a, this is, maintenance is nice, but that, that's essential, and that's a different level. Of so, <laughs> how many, yeah. how many hours does the volunteer fire department put into that maintenance of the levy pumps and all that, the checking of it? <clears throat> I don't know. Caterpillar comes down and checks, you know, the uh, engines. Well, be, uh, to what Kevin is saying, I have heard from a very reliable source that our volunteer fire department has about two more months. Really? They're, they're the um, 16, the, the uh, EMTs, it's going to be a fire department also. Alvin Royal is coming in with professional fire department. And I'm not even sure what it is that Tim Carr does with the levies. But but if that if that goes away, is that some you know, is it something that gets done for like two hours once a month? Or is this something that they go out and do every night? Like, is this something that we might need to consider? Hiring somebody. FEMA to inspects do. it every two years, inspects the levy. Uh -huh. So, from one end if to the other. He's a levy master. You should get him in here and ask him what he does. Yeah. And, and so, you I know, talk, that's pretty simple yeah. to address. And then, that's pretty important, too. Yeah. 
This sounds like an agenda item. It's all about this. This feels like a different agenda item. There is some overlap. I talked to Tim about it, but it might be productive for me to have a second conversation because to the points that you were, I've already discussed. I don't, didn't, that's new news. Thank you. Um, but those hit points of specific things around, around levy maintenance. Mm -hmm. Cutting grass. The, the, the part yeah. that I'm not, I want to make it clear, it's not necessarily the levy maintenance. It's the volunteer and the transport hour new coverage so they have to be there when they start that pump and they cannot leave which comes down to like the bathroom is being closed in there they have no place to go to the bathroom they couldn't go to the bathroom you know at, at canal basin to host closed up i mean I, I guess what i'm saying is there's an opportunity that if if they it, it shuts down the mm -hmm. fire department with enough lead time there you could potentially get like a volunteer from that might be willing to, you know, if the fire department stops running, I'm not saying this could help, but I'm saying that you'd have an opportunity that maybe some of the folks that are still involved with that, if the town was forward thinking in that, they might be able to continue to get their aging, but you, you would have them for another five to 10 years potentially. And I think that's crucial to be able to- We run. used to have a number of civilians on the pump and they, I mean, I was on the pump house thing. I've you run did. the pump. No. Yeah, I've run the pump. So, yeah. if the um, county is going to take over the fire department, maybe not. Maybe the same thing to go to the rest of the fire department. But four days ago, that, and this is not from the official source, but no one of the firefighters from Alamo told me that. Um, it's a transition. Scottsdale volunteers or fire department will end up going to like uh, parks that's structural fires. Um, ECC is going to dispatch the um, Albemarle County firefighters to the tank out of the rest of the building as they may have planned. So um, the, the duties of the fire department are going to be less. But my question is if they're taking over the duties of Scottsboro volunteer fire and the levy is one of the duties, why can't they do right. Well that was Raymond Baggers. Um we did him back when that was never it was they couldn't get their levy system or the fire department. Yeah. I and the fire this, department this, this, this we're kind of yeah this is a whole on. other topic. So let's say that let's get through the rest of this agenda so we can get out of here. Could we just add it to next month? Yeah, yeah I yeah. think there's some um, stuff I can report back and then work on it out of session. Okay, I'm gonna ask the town administrator to go through the new topics. I think we've covered a few of them already. Okay. Um, so we have been, I mean, I and Amelie have been working uh, with Civic Plus around the uh, website revision. So we'll have another meeting this Friday to um, hopefully set up a few back end pieces that will lead to the 21st being the, um, what you call it, uh, the start, uh, the launch. No, launch. launch. Uh, the launch of the Go website. live on the 20th, no, 18th. 18th. Okay. Okay. All right, perfect. So even better news. Um, Friday, right? Yeah, Friday would be the. The Fridays um, that go live on the new website. Oh, great. So, so we hope with August, uh, the website going up, we have been communicating with uh, Civic Plus also to, to follow up with uh, with MuniCode. Um, I'll send another email and their staff member is going to reach out to them to also get our town code up. At that point, I think we have a good you can't put the tail code up until the uh, recodification ordinance is yeah. adopted. Yeah. So, but, they, but you yeah. get it ready to go. Yeah. Right. They had a, a date on that. September I think sometimes. September. September. Last time we saw. But you still have to advertise. You have to receive it, and then you have to advertise. It. So once we get through those steps, we can also uh, push forward to. To get the website. So. Can we just pull it up so everybody knows what it's going to look like? Mm -hmm.
Oh, here, let me see if I can switch it out of. That's how it would look on a phone. <laughs> Give me a second. I've heard of that place. It's a nice town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's more similar to how it would look on a web browser. Nice. I minimized it. Um, so you see up at the top where it says government business community visitors, right? Those are called mega and it's really a person view. So if you're interested in government aspects, you go to the government tab and there's everything that you need there. If you're a business, there's menus under the business tab, community. And I tried to actually put a lot of emphasis on the visitors to sort of beef up our tourism base and things like that. There's probably things that we can add. Um, so again, gathering content, um, a lot of the content, that was on the site was already moved over. There's some older documents and pages that weren't necessary. They have been left off. Um, but you'll see uh, all the minutes, all the meetings, the links to the videos and things are all up there under government. Um, on the bottom, so those are the who's, you know, if you're a community person or resident, you can go to the community section, probably find what you want. On the bottom, the buttons are the what's, documents and forms, services, town businesses, um, agendas and minutes, those kinds of things. This is a standard template that we customize with the big plus. So those things are sort of added in stone, and then all of the other content is variable within the so once it goes live, I would encourage you to go through um, the tabs and see what recommendations you might have on what to add. So for example, under how do I, we have some things right now. Um, how do I make a payment? How do I pay my parking ticket? How do I uh, rent the pavilion? All of those kinds of things. There's probably other things that we would think about that we can put um, on a second phase. But at least there's content under all of these for the first place on our space. I would make a FOIA request. Um, if you go under contact with us, if you could put the cursor up there, that is the one form right now that's up and available. Um, and you'll see where we have the uh, the form that says submit a request. So put in your name, your email, the type of request. We can add maintenance to the drop down mm -hmm. and then they can free type it in and it goes right to Javier. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead, Mary. I have a, just the tiny aesthetics <laughs> suggestion. I don't have my glasses on, so I may be seeing this wrong. Are we using a picture that is still advertising the DMV? Yes. We can change, that could be adjusted. Can we it can we change that picture? Yeah, just it can be. Uh, I'm not. The content's really frozen until launch. So after and, and launch, that was just a tiny little thing. Yeah. Like yeah. the the overall working of it right. is. There was been so much work trying to just get this thing together and out the door. So you'll see the two bars there for upcoming events and latest news. Always been doing a really good job about going through like Scottsdale Monthly and putting all the oh, yeah. events that are going up, as well as all right. of the town meetings, the planning commission, our meetings, and things like that. So all of that is available on the integrated calendar now. It's our calendar. It doesn't go off to Albemarle and things like that. Yep, yep. So, um, so I encourage you all to go through it. If you want to have like, there is a section, I think for government services, if you want to edit that content, mm -hmm. everybody is welcome. They have training on Tuesdays and Thursdays for ARP if you want to be content manager of your own section. I think it's like two o'clock every Tuesday or Thursday. We'd have to sign you up. Let's not do it till next week, but um, you can we can set up uh, content moderators in the different uh, departments, if you will, and then you have full access to your own content, and you can add that. Um, there's some things that, of course, the town will do, like put up the planning commission documents and meetings and things like that. Um, Lisa seemed a little bit concerned of like having to do all that for um, you know her, herself. But that those types of formal things will be done 
but anything else that you have events that are coming up or things like that. This is just for town council members, right? Um, it can be for anyone that the town council approves, as long as we have uh, it all logged into the system and it's all traceable. So let's say, for example, Erin is the content moderator on the ARB. She's not a town council member, but if the town council approves her as the content moderator for ARB, she can have access to them. Right, so they can put anything they want they up. They can put anything. Then they you want. better be very, very careful because you're you're legally liable for it. Okay. And who's ultimately legally liable for it is you guys sitting around here. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. Thank you. So I will cast these out just that you have these were the original deficiencies. Um, Bill, I don't think we shared a copy with you, but we've um, we've managed to plug most of the deficiencies. We're still missing some legal policies. I'm working with Chief Jenkins to put his um, his uh, police policies, the approved policies, up on the website. So he asked me to work with um, one of his staff to do that. So we'll get some of that up. Um, I would love to see phase two where we register and receive alerts for new events. You know, you get a text or something like that. And I left this off about addressing the needs of all stakeholders. I think that's going to become apparent when we go through release and testing, right? Somebody says, oh, I can't find this, and I can't find that. So I went through the stakeholder list that we did when we did the um, strategic plan to make sure that I could find all of the stakeholders and something for everybody in that list. Um, so I think there's at least something in there. I'd be surprised if you know it's fully complete at phase one, but I think the team has done a good job so far. So, so any issues that you would be saying here? Any suggestions for you? Or? Um, you know, we haven't gotten that far as to who's gonna be webmaster. Really, it should be the new town clerk. Right. Who would do that? And so I think we're just going to have to sort of skate along. If there's something okay. egregious, though, okay. absolutely we can take care of it. Okay. But let's um, just be okay. uh, circumspect about what we ask for at this right. point until right. town clerk gets on board. Well, I mean, could you set it, uh, look through it and, and see what you think? But uh, yeah. so but hold off on. No, but still review it and make yeah. sure that, okay. you, you know, if something big yeah. is missing, we should yeah. add. I'll look at okay. it. I, mean, I think it's. Remarkable. I just think it's going to be a great well, thing we've had this town. It's not a big buzz. Oh, Jesus. So, um, mm. there's potential for a lot more. Oh, so. well, thank you so much for that. Yeah, um, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. Item B. So, I shared a little bit about this in my staff report. Um, and I'm going to share a little bit of additional more data I have today. So, we brought on a planning fellow to work on our comprehensive plan. Uh, we did that early summer of last year, last fiscal year. Um, and he has been working diligently on the comp plan work. He has reported to you, he's seen, you've seen the results. Um, I will be frank that he has been an essential part for getting progress done on the comprehensive plan with the workload we've had this summer. Um, he's been able to dedicate his time towards that. Uh, right now, I think from expectations of when we began our comprehensive plan update, scope has increased a little bit. For example, Ron attended the last meeting. We went from having larger outreach events because planning commission saw it as being a priority for a good comprehensive plan. Um, and I've worked uh, the whole time with Lincoln to uh, be as efficient as we can with one staff member doing a, a zoning rewrite. Um, I think a about a few weeks ago, we discussed um, wrapping up and budget limitations I have with uh, our uh, temporary is the line in our budget, uh, but that's our intern, our fellow. Um, and with the progress that we have. Lincoln set a timetable from the beginning of a whole year uh, to turn around a comprehensive plan, which is incredibly ambitious, even for somebody our size. Um, the the run-on joke is that your comp plan takes years after those five years that it would work. Um, just follow the news for any other municipality and how long their comprehensive plan takes. Um, I worked with him about a bare-bones schedule as he 
works into the school year uh, that would hold us to the end of the year best laid plans of a uh, comprehensive plan update. That was shared with you with the idea of after August ending, essentially, uh, we moving to a 15 hour schedule for him. He has been able to do 30, 40 with the demands that we have put on to him uh, this summer. Uh, but that has set up us, us in a good place and has had momentum on a comprehensive plan that we did not have momentum on for a while. Um, what I'm coming back to you uh, for um, as council is um, I wanted to discuss uh, some allowance where we're reaching the end of how much budget we have for Lincoln, an allowance to at bare bones with with uh, an important distinction that our planning commission as volunteers will have to be involved more with more time, um, put Lincoln as an advisory role to reduce his time, but to also have oversight so we can complete that time. Um, what I did was rough numbers last week and then over the weekend, I double checked our budget um, my math is essentially taking staffing savings from not having a town clerk and trying to pivot that into uh, having some remuneration uh, for Lincoln to wrap up the year with us. Um, I worked with him with a schedule of 15 hours through the pay periods, reduced from what he's done this summer, and then, um, and then, uh, given them direction about. We have to pivot into uh, planning commission participation. A lot of it is writing now. We did a lot of the front end and then outreach. Um, so I did a math on it. This only probably makes sense to me, um, but I'm embarrassed sharing this. This is a very presentable, but um, I took our, this is our, for, I took all our paychecks from the beginning of the year, this fiscal year, and our administrative staff. So what I've calculated is that uh, as of our last pay period, which was Friday, we're at 13, uh, 366. We should be at this period in our budget. So 1 12th of our budget at 13, so we're actually saving $400 not having a town clerk. We're on target. We're on target, essentially. Um, then this line, I'll show you the first column, uh, an estimate for through the summer. And uh, so I projected the next two paychecks we would have and how much it would be. Uh, I would have about a $2,400 uh, surplus, I guess, would be the word. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is that the next two paychecks, I probably expect to not be able to get a town clerk until three paychecks ahead, just with the timing of our recruitment. So I can take that specific budget line of our clerk and consider that as administrative costs that will not as typically go out when you have a clerk. So essentially, Bill, what's your question? Well, I mean, I, I, I know, yeah. I see all the number done. So we pay, we pay. He was agreed. I, I don't know what the original agreement was for four thousand dollars for him. Two thousand. We have two thousand on our budget line each side of the each year. So yeah, for temporary. Pay so we hard. paid him what two thousand hours to like forty six hundred. Yeah. So we paid him under two thousand last year. And this year and we're two thousand. And then we'll pay him two thousand. Two thousand more, and that's it. And then there's so, so there's extra after this. Yes. And how much extra after this is? It was so that would be. What I included in the staff report. Oh, well, oh I didn't even look at that. <laughs> That's good. Which is. Oh, I didn't even see that. Oh, okay. I should have read that. Oh, okay. There it is. Okay. Yes. 2,430. So there's. I'm not going to come to you guys for 2,430 more dollars for him. Yes. And so you're redirecting from the town clerk saving into this effort for planning. So with our appropriations, we have a, an administrative line, but I was expressed that. Town Council wants visibility on changes like this. And what I wanted to do was get an exact figure, a schedule from him, and then see if it's feasible within our current budget. 
everything keeping the same as people joke a budget is a guessing game but you want to be good at the guessing game so guessing game would be I, if we don't do this we're going to have 2430 dollars surplus at the end of the year we'd have well at the end two, of the next two next paychecks. two paychecks we'd have 2000 in surplus uh, okay I, I get what you're saying i'm saying like this is not this this is it going to come out of a surplus that we did not account for yet. Right. This was staff salaries. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. get that's correct. Rent. That's okay. what that's what Javier is saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's moving it around. Yeah, it's moving it around. Not reallocate. <laughs> reallocate. Yeah. And you're pretty much ensuring that the comp plan is going to get done with a competent leader. Yeah. Um, I'm all for it. None of this work would be possible right now without Lincoln. I would he not have a lot of work into this. Yeah, when you read it. this thing, you'll see how much work he's doing. And he's done a great job. Uh, yeah. I just have some budgetary budgetary questions as well. So we're coming up on I'm just, if you're not comfortable talking about it, though, mm -hmm. that's fine. But we're coming up on that three months where you're looking at a little bump. Mm -hmm. Has that been accounted for yet? So we have a short little surplus that we you know, eleven thousand dollars. I think I want to make sure that this isn't going to go three thousand dollars, and then we get another chunk. I thought about that. This is priority to get this done, and I think at that point, I have a discussion with council about what our budget looks like, and it has. I would assume you guys would want to stay within budget, but I'm saying this is really important. I think. And what's the time frame on this as far as having to get it done? Um, he yeah. has about two paid checks. I think two paid years, if I'm right. I have to double well, I mean, check. He's actually finishing up the, the work. Oh, what's the time frame on that? Uh, end of the year. He gave yeah. it time end of this year. December. We, December. I mean, we have to spill the call plans Commonwealth of Virginia. What day is that? So you're supposed to do it every five years, but mm -hmm. as we've mentioned before, um, there hasn't been, what would you use the word for? We haven't been. There hasn't been a lot of uh, diligence. diligence from the state on getting it on time. Mm -hmm. uh, You've consistently gone over time. Yeah. It's, so if we go into January, nobody's going to, nobody's going to. That's not all that, that's not what they say. It's acceptable, but that's all, not all that unusual. Um, we presented a timetable to Planning Commission and to Town Council on it. Towards the end, it's really becomes more uh, decisions on approval between first planning commission and then town council. So a lot of the front end, it feels like it's more staff work, and then it becomes more of a uh, a, process. a process, a governmental decision making process on your side. Maybe say, you know, um, I, I hope this is the last year we do uh, internships for a while. But I don't think we have the money to put out for these kind of things. And maybe we're going to get something this year, but I, I know we've had a bunch of interns over the years so mm -hmm. for, that I don't think have they helped out, I guess, but uh, we, we wouldn't know about it. Mm -hmm. So I think I like to do it. the thing about internships, you know, I, I did an internship for UVA and uh, I I was paid by UVA, not by where I worked. Mm -hmm. It was paid for, and, and, and part of the internship is getting your, you know, the benefit of experience. And he's getting a great experience. I, the, the concern I have about him too is I, I know he's doing a good job. I guess he's doing a good job, but you, I wouldn't know it because he hasn't ever been present at our meetings and he hasn't really communicated with us. Um, and I haven't even seen this this thing, but I, I, I know he's, he's working with us. at our meetings, but he's just oh, yeah, the remote. And like, he has communicated. I, I don't like that. I, I'd rather have somebody sitting at the table like everybody else. But, but, yeah, but anyway, but I, I, that's to my concerns. But I, I don't want to get into it. But I, uh, this internship started. About what six years ago? Oh, I don't know. I'm assuming we didn't have that budget. It was about seven years ago. Seven years ago. I mean, I feel like UVA ought to be paying us. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, and when you take a job and say I'll do it for this amount of money, mm -hmm. you should accept that amount of money. Um, and it's not in that budget. We're robbing Peter to pay Paul. I mean, we just the chief just had six thousand dollars that he didn't know was coming. Mm -hmm. Man, we'll all have sixty thousand that we don't know what's coming. We don't, we don't we don't have to spend it just because we're saving it. Yeah. And the planning commission, this is their baby. So it, it gets done. Well, we just don't have the money. 
I did the last one uh, and we had no no support. We just did it. We had some extra meetings. We did it over and over and, and uh, there wasn't any, uh, you know, money put into the to the planning commission. I think it's, you know, if they if they can do it, they should take the ownership of it. Maybe he could get them to a place where they could continue it and we could extend it and let them do it. But let I, me, I don't think we should contract this out anymore. Well, let think. me let me offer op, offer an alternate perspective. Of course. So so my alternate perspective, first of all, is um it's very common for governments to have internships it's super common yeah. we've had a great intern we've had several great interns and it's very common for the internships to receive stipends from who they do the work for not for the other way around now if you have an internship at uva they would typically do something too what i was going to say on behalf of Lincoln, and on behalf of what Javier is saying, we have been shorthanded, you know, so so on the one hand, because we've had the switch over of Matt leaving and we have Javier now as the town administrator, we've had this lovely young lady out here who's filled a, a, an important role as an intern now as a, as a person who's also receiving money from the town when we're glad that you are. We've also had this super high caliber intern, which is, this is unheard of. Like that what we have is somebody who's there. And I and I guess I would say as a town, town councilor, you, can, you may like this or not like this, but most of the time over the years, I defer to staff decisions. And then in other words, if a staff, like in this case, as our town administrator is basically saying, I can rob Peter to pay Paul a little bit because we have this super high caliber guy who's enabling us to do something because we don't have the town clerk. And I will also say, Councilor Bissett makes a good point. I mean, ultimately, the money has to work. You know, we we don't we have to make sure the the balance the the budget balances. But because we're short staffed, because we have this high priority project and a very high caliber person. I really do think it's a good idea to do what you're talking about because it enables the town to have a high quality product. The other thing is, even if you look at what a normal planning commission does, we've done it before, but never to this caliber. Like this is a much higher level product than we've done before. So at any rate, I hear what y'all are saying and it's valid to say, let's not break the bank. I think what our town administrator is saying is we're not breaking the bank doing this. So maybe there's some compromise in between where we can give Lincoln some more money, but not break the bank and make sure that we have this project done. Because I think what you're saying is the caliber of it is, is really something it's, we haven't done before as a town. It's PhD work. It's what it'll end up being 6,000 for what Berkeley Group projected 65,000 for. We would never do six. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I mean, that's, yeah. I hope we don't get into this five years from now when we say, let's do this for 65 yeah. I don't think well, we can afford it. That's, <laughs> that's, what I'm that's, saying. that's I think that's my concern. I think that's the only concern that I have, really. So, planning commission and yourself think it's a good idea. You're getting some, you're getting this value in spending money on it. Do we have the money? Is the question. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to sure. sit down for next meeting? Yeah, and so just, that's just budget budget line. yeah, so that's what I did through my math this weekend. But now we have your raise coming up, and we have, you know, I want to see how that affects, is, I don't know, is there an easy way that you can go, here's what we had planned budgeted, and here's... And here's that. That's yeah. That's yeah. That yeah. So I could come back with what I would expect from our timing of hiring of a clerk and then what our pace scale is set. And also I would have to know exactly the details of the candidate we pull in and see if it works. There's some questions about full-time staffing that dictates which side of the line you land there. Uh, I think, I think Javier, maybe what I would say, if you take collectively with, with the people, if, we wouldn't want to spend more money. Yeah. We would want to do it within what Councilor Bassett has also said, and these guys have said over here that we want to make sure, however you 
move the money around, mm -hmm. we need to do it within the budget. Would you come back to something that feels more well, this might be an idea you're you're gonna hate it, but it's uh -huh. uh, would it be feasible for you to handle town business for another pay period, missing clerk pay period? So you said you have three that you're expecting to have before we hire. Uh, if you went to four or to a third, if it is that longer, that's that's a little more comfortable for me. So we're a little, you know, we have that surplus. So even if it's a couple of dollars, you know, to to be blunt, it depends on. Um, I, I have to know what the candidate yeah, is yeah. to know exactly where I land on that. I'm not no void. So, um, if you do one more, then you will have those discussions about me still running a skeleton crew for the most priority things that I get there. So it's a question, do you want to hold off on some things that are really important for you? Do you want me to reprioritize? Uh, do you well, want me to- That's a question I'd like to hear from you too. Would you rather suffer a little bit on this end of it and give the other paycheck in there and then not have to really deal with the content on the back end of your, your effort side of things? What would be more helpful to you? to have help with the comp plan or the day-to-day -day for another two weeks, three weeks. And I don't know if this is an idea that would work. I just think I'd be more comfortable budget-wise if we put another paycheck in there to kind of widen the gap of that internship. We could do it if I want to have my cake and eat it too. Um, and I don't know if, if this isn't a point an idea that you like or that will work, I want to hear that feedback too, but I think it's... I want to first get with my selection committee about what my recruitment pool is, and then I'll know how confident I feel about how quickly I can get a clerk in here. Um, okay. Part of me says this is more priority than something that we have to discuss in three months. Because you, you guys said, hey, it's a discussion amongst you guys about that. Mm -hmm. So like, this is more, this is what you're going to get award-winning work out of this. Maybe you guys don't care. It's the 2000, but that will set you up. This is 20 years ahead. We're getting it for 6,000. I understand we're being very careful with our fiscal budget, but um, it's yeah, high quality. It's high quality stuff. Can we pay it later? I mean, part of later, maybe like a bonus or something. Once we see the what we have in the budget, and also uh, to see what product we get. Uh, and you know that way it's down the road, and, and we or maybe have a look. Maybe you could do it. Uh, maybe you could do it. Uh, uh, you know, free until mm -hmm. we. Uh, I'll push and, back and, and, and the convention. Hey, is we'd like maybe to pass it back. Yeah, that's not planning commission. Let me see. Too late. America. Too late. How come I didn't get that? It was yeah. not the planning commission. So it's, um, <laughs> it doesn't act fast enough. Can you get me one of those then? I can, yes, yeah, we're going to share it out. He's already bought that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember that. Right. 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 Because we do have that little bit of surplus. And we're already, my understanding is correct, this year, the budget will probably be a catch up year or not a catch up year, a deficit year, not as far as we're actually in the deficit, but some grants are holding over, some things like. Are going to look bad on the on the budget until the next year comes around. It will. Well, the thing is, is that we held off on reimburse, like paying out on these grants, mm -hmm. and then we'll get in more. So we'll already have to have a appropriation because all our grants got pushed past the next year. You. So I'm actually more worried about you guys thinking it's too rosy, and then we go back to okay. a year that it doesn't have grants. Well, who knows? Maybe we decide yeah, to have okay. another facilities grant, for example, four months from now. Um, yeah, I, we set it up also for specific appropriations through the year and a surplus of 11,000. Uh, that was our budget also. We left that. Mm -hmm. But it's at the discretion of town council. I'm just laying it out. I feel pretty confident about the bang for the buck you get with this. But if you don't feel comfortable with that, I can stay with that. So uh, are we going to vote on this at the next session? If you want to vote, yeah. Okay. It's at the council's discretion. So. All right.
<laughs> That's what I would say. <laughs> okay. I just want to make one point in a longer term about internship. I understand that budget is tight. It's always going to be tight. But there is an aspect of the community aspect. Uh, contributing to the growth of a career of younger people in their earlier you know, in their early years. I mean, I, I think as a Scottsdale community, this is a really good thing for us to do as a community service, if you will. So I would say that please, as we move into next year, let's let's remember that as we consider the budget, because I think this has a real impact on these people's well, yeah, I, was in, I, was, I wasn't here when this started. Did the, did the town council actually mm -hmm. uh, Interview the this guy and were, were there interns over the years? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so just one first. See, that's the thing. I think it needs to be a group effort. Uh, if he's picking people, but I think that's it can be a conversation. Yeah, I takes a conversation for another time. Yeah, okay. but, but, but I, just, I just think it should. This is already here. Yeah, one so. person. I just don't think we should write it off. Okay, well, let's move on to item C, which I think we've already talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Item D. So uh, our last architectural review board meeting, uh, ARB came out with a recommendation that for housekeeping, uh, they suggested if town council would approve Alex as, or would uh, appoint Alex as uh, uh, council liaison and the fifth member for the ARB. Uh, so official. Yes. So that's something we have to vote on next week next too, week. and we're just yeah. bringing it up for discussion now. Or yeah, we never do that. No, we have a memorandum on the A's. Is that the idea? Yes, it's exactly. that. Mm -hmm. okay. for ARB. It's a little tricky right now because we only have the five members. Yeah. So if I wasn't a voting member, yeah. and the architect doesn't show up all the time, and you know members don't show up all the time, so to have an actual form might be tricky if I'm not a voting member. What well, we have to unless you're a voting member. Hmm? It won't happen. It won't be tricky. It won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we've already talked about item E, right? Mm -hmm. Well, just, just one quick comment. Right. It's great. Thank you for doing that. I hope you can vote there. And thank you for being on the roll. Well, they seem to not hate me. So. Can I beg your indulgence for two quick things? Make them quick. So, um, on the website, I just want to shout out to Jack Maxwell. There, as you go through the website, you'll see there's a lot on um, preparedness about getting the community to prepare um, for floods or other types of um, uh, scenarios and things. And he did a lot of work to put that all together together for us. So um, thank you, Jack, for all your work. Thank you, Jack. And I wanted to present to you all, um, Jack, Jack has a new idea. I had thought to actually create a committee on emergency preparedness, which is something that I find very important. But Jack actually came up with an idea um, to, as part of his nonprofit, to dedicate his hours and his work to preparedness for the town. So this includes um, weather notifications and things like that that he, you know, sometimes does now, but in a more formal way. So here's a, a little briefing. This is just FYI. I don't think it needs to be approved. He had, does not get to speak on behalf of the town in any way, shape, or form, but it is a public service uh, that he has offered to do for the town, which I think... I have uh, asked Jack to speak during the public forum session next week. I'll be at training. Okay, we'll I'll get, get you another time. So he's done a lot of training. You can see all on his own. Um, I think he deserves a lot of credit. This is for your information and some of the things that he's going to continue to do for the town in helping people stay informed about different emergencies, making their emergency plans for both businesses and for individuals, um, building an emergency preparedness kit, what you should keep on hand if you have to evacuate in the, uh, in the event of a flood and things like that. 
A lot of it's drawn off of best practice and public information that is out there at the state level, at the federal level, but I think it's nice to have that information at the top. Okay, thank you, Jack. Well, appreciate it. And then the last thing I want to, this is really important that I think we talk about this at our next work session. I hope to sort of get into it a little bit this one, but I'm a little concerned about our revenue streams. As I look at the economy and the inflation rate, um, there seems to be no slowing. Um, I was talking to Chief Jenkins, personal credit card debt just crossed a trillion dollars for the first time in history. I think people are having a harder and harder time of making ends meet. I went to the food line recently, um, and there were more express line checkouts than there were full service line checkouts. I think that's an indication that people are buying some fewer things. I think we need to keep an eye on this economy. I think we need to look at our revenue sources, because a lot of our revenue sources are consumer based. And if that consumer base shrinks, and next year we're going to have, or even later in this year, we're going to have some cash flow. So I want to have a more broad discussion on revenue generation. Kevin mentioned account tax. I think you need to look at some of those numbers and come up with potentially other ideas on how we manage revenue going forward. So I ask that we put those upon the agenda for next time. Okay. Serious discussion. All right, that's it. Thank you all. Yeah, I 